So we will uh, open up the meeting of the ARPA Application Review Committee. And we will start, as tradition has it, by a pledge to the flag. It's over there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. So um, hopefully you have the agenda in front of you, and we're gonna rough, very roughly stick to it. Um, but first, uh, we're gonna get off the ground with a couple of updates. Um, should, yeah, we just won't be able to hear them. Is that gonna be better? The echo is less. Yeah, uh, it's coming out of there though. Okay. So let's talk about um, the money that is available. When we last met, we thought there were going to be more requests in dollar amount than there was money available. That has changed. Um, the amount of the request, the total aggregate amount of the grant requests isn't as much as we had thought. And it was close enough so that the town council at a meeting um, last year decided to increase the amount available um, for grant ARPA grant awards so that if every single grant that was submitted were awarded in full, there would be enough money to cover it. And that was not the situation when we started this committee. And back then in October, we were thinking that it may have to be a triage system that if we you know, granted an award in full to one person, we might have to cut back someone else, even though that someone else may have had a, a worthy grant application. That's no longer the case. So um, that's important to... Uh, you know, that may affect the uh, decision making. The um, UHY's portal will, uh, in about a week, have all the numbers up uh, in a sort of a tracking system. Um, but let's just wait for that to appear. So keep in touch with that UHY portal, and that'll bring you up to date on uh, the applications filed and the applications that passed their muster and the aggregate amount of money requested, so on and so forth. Uh, let me just stop there for a minute. Any, did I confuse anyone? Did I get that out clearly? Yeah, Craig, and then we'll, yeah. So the number that's been approved is the conjunction with the application mass presently, but based upon what you just said, is it possible that UHY may say that some of those applications don't, uh, um, are not appropriate? I hear you, absolutely, and that'll probably happen. Therefore, uh, there will be uh, uh, money that the council contemplated could have gone to these applications will be left over. There'll be money left over, and that'll be up to the council, the administration, the government, uh, you know, Wallingford government, what to do with that money. So there for sure will be some that UHY will reject, and you know, who knows what the committee will do. But I mean, that's so. What is the intention with regard to those applications that UHY we or we that we do not see them? Um, I hear you. That's up to us. They're certainly willing to put them up on the portal if we ask, and I think they're going to do that anyway, or they might do that anyway with a color code or some marking saying top secret confidence. That's a joke. Uh, saying these have been rejected, uh, so you will know what you know what has been done with them. The, the concern of the last council yeah. meeting was with regard to those that 
subset specifically. Um, at some point, the council is going to be dealing with uh, recommendations, working together with the mayor, and ultimately releasing one. And the concern is that at whatever that meeting happens, that if someone on one of those applications comes and tries to lobby the council to consider their application, even though it didn't make it. So I, I think we just have to be cognizant of that. And I know, you know, it, it seemed like the tenor of the council was uh, we want to be fully informed of one another. So I just yeah, I mean, that could happen, but that's not the committee's, you know, responsibility at that point. Um, so. Yeah, I think perhaps we should be prepared. Uh, well, maybe, maybe if you were a they would be the one to... Yeah, but that's, uh, let me just interrupt you because that's not, hand, the council handle it any way the council wants to. That's just not our, you know, um, if, if we don't, once we either don't get it, don't get the application to decide, or once we decide it and pass the report on to the council, we're done. And then- To your yeah. point, those rejected from us are very multiple to swallow up whatever term you want to use. We should be aware of exposure and you will be. Yeah. I'm not sure about the reason. Yeah. I, I doubt that there'll be a reason other than didn't meet the criteria, incomplete, violated ARPA, you know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, Amy. Uh, somebody who sent from um, UHY, from Terry, put on the that's all that was filed i think 40 are on the portal now yeah. and they're still working to uh try to collect the requested documentation and some of the applicants um may have been less than prompt and so that's maybe why some, you know, there's 10 not showing. Um, some of that 10 will be rejected. I don't have the number. But um, in, in a week, it'll all shake out and everything will be on the portal. We just got to wait a week for the final numbers. Yeah, Craig. So I just want to come back to where we were discussing those in the applicants. Very beautiful. Information and finding that kind of stuff. It may be appropriate to bring it to the attention of the council that there may be this group and that it, it and recognizing that it, I think it's a decision that we're not going to see those. It's not part of our purview. And it may be appropriate for the council to decide about the cases we get it why to decide. So I, I, I don't know if that connection is made. Well, first of all, this is new stuff. You know, this is within the last 48 hours. Okay. Um, the, how, again, how the council wants to deal with that. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't think that I was going to go in front of them and say, please look at these rejected applications. We don't have a dog in that fight. That's between the council and the consultant. Yeah. If the, I mean, the council can be made aware on their own terms you know, through their own channels as to how many have been rejected and just take it from there if you if you want. I guess the concern from my perspective is we are at and we have a bunch of recommendations based upon this, we have a subset, and then the question comes up, um, what about those? Why are they rejected? But that's not our question. So That's the council's no, question. I, I, <laughs> I got that. I don't know that the connection has been made that there's an understanding that there was hand off on that subset. So here's a clear, clean answer to that. All those counselors are watching this meeting and your comments, and that'll resolve everything. I and, so. and I can also put a sentence in the, the periodic reports that I will give to them that um, a certain number has been rejected and we're, you know, and we're not going to decide. Right. And that's not our responsibility. Right. Yeah. Speaks for itself, right? Yeah. So if they're watching this, they don't record it. 
Um, sure. <laughs> You know, let me just say at the at the end of the process, and if we have a lot of extra time, um, if you want to hold a meeting just to review applications, we will never see, never decide, never discuss. You, you know, um, maybe there's a meeting, and I don't know how many people are going to show up. But if they've been rejected, unless someone wants to overrule UHY and argue with them, I don't think it's our job to do that. Uh, but I mean, it, 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 that's, this is the end of the end of the process when we have a lot of time in our hands and not much to do. We can argue with you, H. Why? Why? Let, let's let's work with what we have, and we, we can take that up in May. You know when we yeah yeah Jesse. I was just going to say, it's my understanding that the process with UHI is that they're the ones deeming whether the applications themselves are appropriate in asking who's in it. So if we go back and look at what they don't deem appropriate, then why do we have them looking in the first place? So I think we're sort of sidestepping around what we're saying. Yeah. We do. I can agree with you. I think I just look at that as a regulated regulated lot of yeah, they they that out, and now you see the ones that are qualified. Right. I, I would like to see an inventory of what was rejected and why. And I also was wondering if the if the applicants are being told by the group if they're being rejected. We are wandering way off of our reservation. I mean, uh, you know, this is we're given applications to assess. We'll assess them if there's extracurricular work to do. I have no objection tipping off the council. There's, if you want to argue with UHY and overrule and appropriate money, UHY's rejection notwithstanding, have at it. You know, I mean, I, yeah. maybe yeah. Mike, Mike, maybe that's what you said earlier. Mike Lynn, yeah. Sense. At the end of the process, if we still have time, we we maybe ask for UHI gives a summary of the things that didn't make it to our desk, and then that goes to the council. The count we're we're ultimately an advisory board to the council. Although we have a, a, a review process, we are advising them to act on this. So the council, like you said, can say, yeah, UHI, I, I got a problem, they deal with it. So I guess I would say, I agree with you. Let's just get, get to work. Yeah. Um, my personal position on that is that's why I have Craig Frischbein. If he wants to bring it up to the council, I mean, that's, he can put it on the agenda. So you can, um, let's move on. Uh, let's move on here. Um, since we last met, um, there's been new criteria that the council has approved and one they're working on. And the criteria is important to us because that is the writing by which we assess and judge these applications. So there is a new uh, business, a new business criteria that was approved. Uh, we're gonna, I think, let's not put that on the uh, whiteboard now, just sort of a tip off. And another set of criteria for nonprofits is being worked on in the law department. So um, pending receipt from the law department of this new criteria for, for nonprofits, um, there's more information to to come in. Um, I'm going to skip ahead and we're going to meld this into something further down the agenda. I, maybe that was a little too vague, but we'll clarify that. Um, on the agenda, I have the, the UHY schedule. So in a week, we should have everything. Um, beginning of February, we should have everything. If they're late a day or two or three, they're late a day or two or three, um, but it doesn't matter because we're going to have a ton of work to do. We have a ton of work to do now. But I'm anticipating, and they're anticipating, subject to something unforeseen, by February 2, um, every application that's been approved will be up on their portal. And so that's sort of, that's the new schedule. And all the backup will be up on their portal. So uh, we don't have long to wait for the final, uh, for the final list. Yeah, Carl. That said, in terms of the approval, when that target date is back on February 2nd, 
interpret the uh, implementation of those funds premature and understand what we what these are the implementation of dispersion of those funds to the basic seal. All right, let's talk about that. Um That's that's a little bit of work in progress. So let me start with that caveat. Let, let, let me start with, this is a somewhat informed speculation as the process going forward. Um, I anticipate that we will decide tonight whether or not I send up a report. I'm getting to your point, but there's steps along the way. Uh, I'm anticipating um, that periodically I, I send to the council a report on those applications we have just approved at the at, a, at, at the last meeting. Now we can decide to batch. We can decide to withhold all and send them up as a batch. That's to be discussed. We can decide to do it after every meeting so that there isn't a log jam in the law department. I'm circling around to your point, Carl. But let's take the example that we decide that if on one particular night we approve seven applications, I'm thinking the next morning I would email government that these are the applications we approved at the meeting February 23 or whatever it is. And with respect to those seven applications, we're done. What happens next? There has to be a, uh, three things have to happen and I do not know the order of them. There has to be uh, a recommendation by the mayor to the council to appropriate the money uh, that, that corresponds with a granted award. So the mayor has to send a recommendation to the council. He may do that piecemeal, he may not, don't know. The council at some point is gonna have to appropriate after the mayor recommends. The schedule's out of our control. The law department is going to need to have an individual contract with each grant awardee, with each grantee of the funds, an individual contract. So I don't know what their process is going to be. They may make appointments and have them come in, review the contract, have them sign, but no money goes out the door until those three things happen. Now, we don't know yet whether or not these are cash up front grants, meaning all those three things happen and the comptroller wants to write a check, that's up to administration and they write a check and the money goes out the door or they're reimbursement grants and the grantee needs to front the money and present the comptroller in the law department with receipts, invoices, cancel checks, whatever criteria they decide out of our jurisdiction. If they're reimbursement grants, that answers your question. How fast does the grantee spend the money and compile the documentation, go into the comptroller and say, I had a, an award of $25,000. I actually spent 22,193 and 36 cents. This is all my paperwork and the comptroller at some point writes a check. Did I answer your question? You answered, uh, my question. I think the only yeah. control in that whole explanation is the fact that as we approve these and not batch them, get it out to the government. I agree. But it's a decision, decision of the group, and that's why I phrased it that way. I understood. Yeah. At the last meeting, um, I raised the possibility, again, my job is to set out alternatives so we don't get into group think or bandwagon, you know, uh, you know uh, conformity for the sake of conformity. That when I thought there wasn't enough money to go around, uh, you look at the first application and you say, wow, that's really good. But then you look at the, a bunch more and say, that's not so good in comparison. That's pretty weak now that I see what others have done. So what I wanted to raise, I wanted to raise the possibility that you, people have a last look and say, did you want to change your mind, either adding to an application that you didn't think was so good in the beginning, but now that you see what everyone else has done, and maybe it looks really good. But I'm not sure that danger or that risk is present anymore in view of the additional money that the, the council awarded. But that was my thinking, a chance for a second look after you've seen more 
and you're able to compare what are strong applications, what are weak applications, but maybe the reason for that now has evaporated and we're gonna to vote tonight on that, on that issue, but it's, it's 25 minutes from now. <laughs> Craig. So, I think it's very difficult for us to take a story field application in a vacuum, deal with those, release those, have whatever procedure happen, and then like a month later, well, not a month, but at a subsequent meeting, we can get another handful because the natural is to compare that handful in some way, shape, or to the handful that you've already dealt with. So, I sort of look at this that, you know, there's an initial look and then there's selectivity and then there's a final look and then everything goes, right? Because an opinion of an application may change as you look at the balance of 50 as opposed to a handful of five. So seeing as we're on this topic and we're doing more than scratch the surface, we'll deal with it now. And, 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 and what we'll do is we'll go around the table, uh, Carl, uh, uh, Jacqueline, Mike, and, and so on. And if we need to go around the table a second time, we will. And after that, we will take a vote. I have a present for you. So Oh, you have the that's the voting score sheet. That, that, that's all that is. So if we have votes, uh, Bernadette can keep score. So the what's that? No, there's a bunch of them. Uh, so the issue, the issue is um do we send up to government immediately after we approve grants? a list of those grants, whether whatever we decide at the, the prior meeting, it could be the night before, do we hold them um, for a longer period of time to form a, a greater pool of applications, the details of that to be discussed? Uh, or is there a third alternative I haven't, you know, um, haven't raised? But as you go around the table, React and if there's another way that we haven't discussed, raise it and we'll and 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 we'll see. Jacqueline, you're next up if you want it. I feel like we have a scoring tool and scoring is scoring, and it's going to be the same. So I say the batches and send them. Send them up as soon as we decide them. All right, I I now tend to agree. I, I didn't think I would be that clear on it at at, at the last meeting in October, Jesse. Oh. Yeah, because I just spoke and Jacqueline spoke and did well, we get we hit Carl? We no, I'm sorry, did we skip you, Carl? Because we're okay. yeah, because I was gonna go from Craig all the way around, but I, I don't know why, but I it's my view if you have the principles that are consistent with following the criteria um that were given. Yep. And you approve that criteria, submit those principles in good faith, majority vote, the move forward. I don't think we should wait. Respectfully, I understand the value of that in terms of the collection and change opinion because of, of, of we have some new fresh applications in our group and change, change is subjective opinion and something we've got to do something that the application is approved, it meets the criteria, it's a majority vote. We keep happy. Immediate report. Okay, he's for the Jesse. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of like. Thinking about 130 some odd business plans that they're going to have to read, and I don't know what the path to to get to that is. I agree that we waited long enough, or we can hold up long enough to have anything to play with, but um, I agree that if the scoring criteria is what we're using, and you all agree to use it, then I have no problem with doing the batches and sending them up. Um, what I would probably do as some of the that want to send people is I would try to read as many as possible before I start scoring. Like I've already started meeting the nonprofit meetings, um, but I haven't made any decisions about scoring and just trying to get an understanding of what's in them. So I think it kind of does both, where you're saying, like, look at all of them and come back to them. 
I might read them all before I storm or try to at least if we can look at them, but I have no problem with doing that because I think we need to start I think we need to start up the monitoring. Your bottom line is immediate reporting of the results from the night before. Is that uh, I, I need to do whatever is whatever best for you and the monitor. I, I mean, I don't know how many... Administratively, I'm going to take a take a guess that the law department and the comptroller would rather get to them as soon as they could, rather right. than be, you know, like a document dump. But they get paid big bucks too, you know. They they'll do what we. 139 contracts. This is the process we were starting. 139 contracts. And then getting these, I mean, that, that itself would be, if I, if I were the first time, you know, come on, you can. All right. Give me another thing. Give me another thing. All right. Bob? Yeah, Keith, or I agree that's totally easy. Can we prove it? Why would we go back and we have two months later to say, when we can get on? I don't know. Just back and forth. Amy? Um, I agree. We're not offering offering anything serious. I think that's the first time we to fund all the applications. We don't have to go back and say, oh, you know, we like all these students in the cut, so we're not going to be in case of where we can fund the zone to qualify. So I don't know if they're getting out and go as fast as possible because we'll move back and see who's contacting. And, and counseling is every two weeks, so it's not like we approve tomorrow and we won't approve the next. We're going to get a batch of multiple days of money. Also, we can do it even more than two weeks. Mike Lynn. So uh, instant gratification, I guess, seems like the theme. Um, I, I, it makes sense. The only thing I'd probably throw the question to Craig, since since he's our direct con direct connection to the council, you know, you're going to be getting all these stuff right into the budget season. Will the council be able to ha see this during budget season? So kind of, you know, I, I don't mean to I don't mean to deflect it right to you, but it, it makes sense. People are going to people are going to want to see these immediately, but the warning to the council is: we move quick. It's coming. You need to react. Rob, I agree with the general council of the uh, application to the law. We have very simple charter score the applications that we receive. We are not uh, it's not a competition. One of the applications is another. We set a criteria. If they meet the criteria, we pass. And there's enough money for all the applications to date. Okay. So if the application should have been submitted and it didn't, if that's not our charter, then I think we need to stay away from that. That's outside the premise of what we're doing. So vote on it, or, uh, grade them, move them through the council with them. Uh, uh, Craig has another comment. So go around the table again. You don't have to repeat yourself if it's just yeah. zipping right around, then that's what we were. I just want to go into the comments. Yeah. Right. Actually, you, you missed Chris Reagan. In the Zoom world here, what the application that comes to us is okay based upon the criteria. You want to go home because we have all the money, and you're saying that they shouldn't be compared to each other. So go home. So practically speaking, we're going to score them. Some may score a ten, some may score a hundred. We may be uncomfortable giving that ten all of that money. That score may change based upon how we see others have filled out the application. And that's ultimately the problem. It's our job to score them. The score has to be related to something. And then, you know, the first batch that you look at, I've done this before, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, the first batch you look at, you don't naturally score the same way you do the last batch. Because sometimes, you know, there's all the fires in the world. You scored somebody higher than they really should have on that first bat, and somebody comes across it at the last bat, and they well, you know, I did it with that one, I did it with this one, and that kind of stuff. So, you know, ultimately, you might have to that's the problem. Now, there is a way to deal with that problem, and this is what they're for. You just make part of that, right? So you say, you know, we've got 50 of them in this particular pool. I think it may be appropriate to say once we get to 25 that we are comfortable on, we release that because that's a larger review. But with just take five and to score those uh, and to, you know, 
make whatever recommendation. I don't want to be fair to the whole school. If more than likely you're going to score the five that we back in differently. I want everybody to be treated equally. Um, hold on one sec, Carl. I don't want to lose control of the because we're going to get into an argument and then it'll be eight o'clock before we know. So let me just finish it. We're going to go around the table one more. Hold on one sec. Hold on one sec. Hold on one sec. I don't think we did. I have so not. We did. <laughs> Mike has my back, so I'm good with that. Very uh, good. Just, just briefly, we owe it to these people, at least in my mind, to be as expeditious as possible, given the delays that have been, um, you know, that we've seen thus far. The only question that I would have is what the order is. Um, I would prefer random, um, you know, draw of the hat of some type instead of alphabetical or top down based on dollar amounts or bottom up, et cetera. So that's the only concern I have on that, you know, get them in, get them out. Chris, we're going to address that order of the agenda in this meeting. We're going to address that. So perfect. Um, so let's go around the table in the same order that we started. Don't feel obligated to repeat that, which you've already said, because we got to move on. Carl. I just want to say, I yeah. totally respect uh, Chris, you point, you point on this, but I have reviewed hundreds of grant applications. I have reviewed hundreds of PPP applications at the federal level. Uh, we score them individually. We complete the criteria and eligibility. What we don't do is try to compare one business with another. That, that does it meet this criteria? What is the form of the criteria? Is it is it broadly accepted? Does it meet the criteria from the federal level, the, the committee level, and it's passed through? For us to compare X versus Y business, to me, I, I, I just I, I think it defeats the measuring analysis. Jacqueline. Okay. I'm ready for immediate report and I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, I, I'm going to make the motion and then we'll continue going on. Okay, just to focus the thoughts. Um, so I'd entertain a motion uh, that the chairman uh, report to the council, to governments, um, as soon as practicable after votes on applications are made. I just need a second. We'll keep going around until we, uh, until we, everyone has a chance to speak twice on it. So we're up to Jesse and then Bob and, and so on. Oh, you 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 had your. Bob second. Oh, you. No, I heard you right. Um, I agree one hundred percent that like when you look at all of them, you're seeing the same, and that's just that's just inherent bias, and like you're doing a whole bunch of stuff that you're whatever you see is going to make you think differently. But I do think the fact that there's ten of them kind of controls for that a little bit. Like I think if the one person would be all those passing through, I think that that would be there'd be cause for that, but I think because we're all come from a, from a different angle and way we sort it, I think the discussions around the applications themselves will kind of come to the front. Um you know you can look at you can look at 25 and you know, not 26 and you get higher, you know, and, and maybe the pricey and you're just kind of like, this is the I do agree that maybe the batches should be higher than anything else. I don't think we should be sending five up to two, but I think that if we did it in 20 or 50 or whatever, we created the threshold. And I think it would help motivate us. So, it so, so therefore, um, if you feel, if you feel it's worth a no vote on the motion, vote no, and we'll go to the second idea, which is a larger batch. All right, so that's procedurally how we'll handle that thought, okay? Did you have me down as making the motion? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. So I made it and Bob Gross seconded? Mm -hmm. Good, okay. You know, right now we're at one, which is the criteria. If we, if we uh, accept one, that that will get released to the council. Um, is it clearly what we discussed? And you know, just to go to the bottom of the I would move to amend the motion to make the uh, minimum 
And then, and then the council's not getting, you know, here's some grabs too. Um, you know, so I'll move to amend the motion. I'll get a second. Yeah, I'll, se I'll second that motion. Um, so now we need a, uh, we'll, we'll take a vote on that amendment. So if you like the idea of batches of 15, as soon as we get there to the 15 level, vote yes on the amendment. If you want to go to, if one meeting, we only approve 10, we report up 10. If we only approve five, we report up five, so on and so forth. The next couple of meetings, we probably will not see 15 on the agenda. I'm probably going to start light and slow so we get our feet on the ground. So um, it could be meeting schedules coming up in our discussion. But if we have meetings on January 30, February, January 30, January 31, and or February 1, we might get to that 15 threshold. We might not. That I'm, That's all I'm, all I'm saying. A couple of weeks to get to that. It could. It, so it, it's possible. Yeah, and some are complicated. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I want this point out. I think for us to be expeditious in this process, I think that's got to be part of the agenda. Okay, um, let's let's do this. Let's. Um, did anyone? Everyone have two chances, two cuts at it. Chris, Chris Regan, before I forget you, hold on one sec, hold on one sec, hold on, hold on one sec, hold on one sec. Did you have two bites at this apple? Uh, there's a, a motion to amend to batch them at 15 minimum. Your thoughts on that, and then we'll go back to the in-room table. No, I am, uh, I'm good. So, Mike, there's been a little, so about changing to 15 and- um, Hold on one sec, hold, hold on, hold on one sec. Let, let me, hold on one sec. Chris, do I have your ear? Yes, and the response was, I'm fine with uh, my previous statement, nothing else. Which which was as soon as practicable? Yes. Okay. Okay, so, so this is on the amendments now, and Carl, you had your, your pitch on it. Your what? And, I, and I, I'd, like to, I'd like to procedurally uh, amend the proposed amended motion which may call for a withdrawal of the motion. Exactly. You want to change your mind to 10? Yeah. Okay. You just changed your mind. The motion to change. We're down to 10. You're happy with 10. <laughs> Jacqueline, you're happy with 10 or as soon as practical? 10 is fine with you. This is on the amendment. Uh, I'm happy with 10. I don't prefer as soon as we we go because administratively it's easier and faster but that's okay you, you want 10 or as soon as practicable you yeah just you're 10 bob you're, okay the big the grand compromise amy you're going to live with 10 all right mike glidden so i'm as soon as practical you're at as soon as so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take a we're gonna take a vote um, on the ten because that was amended and the vote is um, we report up as soon as we have ten of approvals of grant applications and if you want to go as soon as practicable vote no got it. So uh, we're gonna go down the, everyone understand what the motion is? So the motion is 10, yes or no? Okay. Carl. Yes. Mike, yes. Craig Fishbein. Yes. Rob Fritz. Yes. Mike Glidden. No. Bob Gross. Jacqueline McNamee. Yes. Chris Regan. No. Jesse Reynolds. Yes. Amy Walsh. No. 
Okay, so that doesn't carry because we need seven votes. All right, I'll second that. So the motion is to the, the, the hold, on, hold on one sec. Hold on one sec. Hold on. It was amended. I'm ruling it's not on the table. There's a fresh motion. You're overruled, and we got to move forward. So that was voted down, and now the motion is as soon as practicable. Did you make it and I seconded? Okay, so we're going around the table. Now it's as soon as practicable. And um, if that doesn't uh, pass, then the chairman is gonna be left to his own devices, which I am happy to do. So as soon as practicable, Carl. Yes. Mike, yes. Craig. Yes. Rob Fritz. Yes. Mike Glidden. Yes. Yes. Bob Gross. Yes. Jacqueline McNamee. Yes. Chris Regan. Yes. Jesse Reynolds. Yes. Amy Walsh. Yes. That motion does carry one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So as soon as practicable, I'll report that up. Um, okay, it's quarter past seven. We're moving ahead on the on the agenda. Uh, next on the agenda, Chris, is your favorite topic? Is how do we determine what goes on the you know what goes on the agenda for that next meeting or next several meetings? There's two pathways I got to describe. One is the next th possibly three meetings or the meetings that are scheduled, presently scheduled for January 30, 31, and February 1. Those three meetings. I was thinking that for those three meetings, I would go through the applications and we would have to decide whether we want to start with nonprofits, start with businesses or straddle both categories to be decided. That's to be decided. And I, and I was thinking because we're just getting our feet on the ground and those meetings are close together. And in order to efficiently discuss and vote, we need to prepare, which means you gotta do homework, which means ideally you're, we are not coming to the meeting and reading those applications for the first time. We've already studied them at home and thoughts have kind of gelled subject to the discussion here. Um, and I would try for these three meetings um, to pick out maybe the cleaner applications, maybe if I can do it, um, the ones that are, might be you know, easier and simpler and uh, just to get going. Um, then after that, um, I don't contemplate a meeting in the second week of February at all. That would be preparation for what would be coming up for the rest of February, March and April meeting dates we're gonna discuss later on down the agenda, as you know. And at that time, um, at our last meeting on this, now let's say that last meeting is February 1, before we have a break to prepare. Um, I would suggest we just, just sort of leave it up to me to put on the agenda four or five per night or five or six per night or something like that. You wouldn't be overwhelmed with preparation because you don't have that much time between tonight or tomorrow and January 30. So it'd be a light agenda ideally with less complicated applications. And thereafter, we would have two or three meetings under our belt and we could decide how we want to go forward after that. I, 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 let, me, let, me just, let me just finish. As part of that thought process, it may be easier in preparation and understanding what we're doing if we focus on nonprofits first or businesses first, and sort of get into the rhythm of those and getting used to seeing, let's say, just business applications before we move over to nonprofits. 
but we can mix them and match them. I mean, it's it's preparation and it's the thought process that goes in. I'm either way, you know, I, I could do either one, but I have more time. I'm retired and, you know, so you've got to figure out how you want to handle that. But Chris, let me just ask you, um, or I'll direct this mainly to you, not, not really asking, we could from um, February on, decide on a system for how we get applications on the agenda. We could do it tonight or we could wait until that the end of our last meeting on this on this batch. We could take them in alphabetical order. We could pull names out of a hat. We could, uh, you know, any way, any way you want, any way the group wants. But I need to know how to set the agenda well in advance because aspirationally, I would send copies of the agenda to the applicants by email. And I need to get the I need to get the agendas, you know, out quickly so that all members of the committee know what applications to study. Um, and, and the applicants can arrange a schedule if they want to come in and watch, they could come in and watch. So they may want a week's notice or something. So it, I just administratively, I, you know, we need something that I can, something that, that I can implement um, that's not overly complicated. Um, Chris, because, because this was your, I'm getting some echo, because this was your concern at the last meeting too, you raised this in October, I would ask you first to take the first swing and react to what I said and what you would prefer. Sure. sure. So for the first, so next week's uh, series of meetings, uh, next week, um, um, Chairman Stroyce, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to be spending the same amount of time, no matter what collectively it is. Um, so pick a random sampling. Um, I would say probably leaning more heavily towards the non for profits, um, just as as you know, those seem to be more firmly baked at this point in time, and we have some chance to take a look at them since the businesses are still coming in. Um, from that point on, differentiate anything above, and it's an arbitrary number, $100,000 um, is not random and is scheduled uh, because those are, I think, we're, are going to be the ones that we're going to have the most interaction within that potential applicant, potentially. Um, and then anything under $100,000 pick from a hat. Or that may be complicating it, you know, too much as well. I want to, I, I, I wanted to break down the, the issue. So I'm going to stay with you before we go around the table. Do, are, are you okay with, for the next meetings that we have in, in January and one in February, that I I pick the um, the applications that it seem to be easier to do with, and just put a few on the agenda. Yes. Um, and then at, thereafter, we'll have a, this conversation again to see how we go forward. Is that? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so let's go. Let's go around. Who wants to take the next swing, and then we'll Bob, and then we'll go around. And um, I agree. We can say beginning. And taking some of the large ones in there that are more complicated and some parts might fit ARPA and some parts might fit ARPA. Let's take the small ones to start with and move those right on and move those right to the council as quick as we can. Um, let's go to Mike Glidden before I, if you're not in front of me, I tend not to look at the big screen. So. Let's go okay. to Mike. Actually, I agree with what, what Bob Gross just said. Uh, I'll make it short and sweet. Uh, you know, maybe tackle the smaller ones first. That way, too, as a group, we all can kind of get get used to this this process of scoring, and we just move them as quick as possible. The larger ones, we you know, we'll we'll as we get more seasoned in the review session, we uh, we tackle those. But uh, start then, so, and I would suggest starting with not for profits, since like you said, we've had enough time to really look at these versus the businesses. I understand the urgency of the businesses. It's just, they're just coming in. And, you know, myself, I've, I've reviewed, I think majority of the ones that are in the, on the portal right now. So. Okay. So we're going to go around the table starting uh, uh, 
Bob, you spoke first, right? So starting with Amy, so two thoughts. The next agendas for January and very beginning of February, it'd be up to me to put basic applications up to the extent I can do that and sort of a lightish agenda. And thereafter, we'll get to Chris Regan's concern about how do we go forward after that? That's the... If you, I like the idea of starting with some um, smaller applications to get our feet under us and figure out to get used to the scoring system and all that. Um, I heard a little bit about flipping back and forth between business and nonprofit. And I'm staying in one field, at least from the beginning, because I think it's going to be confusing to flip back and forth. So I would say the first couple of meetings, we should focus on nonprofits since that's the majority of the applications that are in the, the portal right now. Um, I think it would be confusing to flip back and forth. And particularly, if, what, if we have one night that we're flipping back and forth between businesses and nonprofits. I need to interject something, Rod, before we get to you. On the nonprofits, there are two ways to get money. One is if you're offering programming, and the other way is if you have, uh, I'll call it a hardship, uh, the nonprofit is not doing programming, but in a way they're kind of like a business. And because of the pandemic, the the, the finances of the, of the nonprofit are, are are wounded. So there's two ways. We do not yet have the criteria for the hardship applications, the hardship grants for nonprofits. I'll get that within a week. We do have the criteria for the programming. The problem is it's one application, but two separate trails. They, you know, they go in different directions. Probably, let me just finish. Probably, probably the programming applications are more complicated. I'm not daunted by that. I can just put fewer on the agenda. So there's fewer to prepare, but we won't see those hardship nonprofits because we don't have criteria yet. So with that in mind, we'll just continue the discussion. But I wanted to get that in there. I, I didn't know that we were gonna take that turn when we started this, so Rob. Certainly, uh, I agree that we should start with some smaller applications just to understand we don't know what we don't know what we're working on something that we may not be able to explain. The one thing that I'm concerned with, I, I have no problem with as well, given the setback starting with the nonprofits. However, I think we need to have some sort of framework for the businesses, even if it means a little bit of mixing, because I don't think it's fair of them to be held hostage while we do the nonprofit summer. We don't know how long that's going to take. It's going to take a month, two, three months to do the nonprofits, and in the meantime, the businesses are waiting. They've got their applications in just like the nonprofits have. I think that they're going to respect the same level of respect. So I think we have to have some sort of cadence between the two. And we can discuss what that cadence is. I don't think it should be more than a couple of weeks between one versus the other. I think that's fair, but I don't want to see a long delay in the business. Is that the first one? Yeah. So um, the, the choice can be made. I keep saying at the next three meetings, after the next three meetings, the choice can be made at the last of those meetings, where we go from there. We may have done, hypothetically, if we have three meetings with nonprofits, programming type nonprofits, and we're able to tackle, I'm making the number up, eight, that's all we can get out the door. I would report those eight up and we would then decide whatever your wishes are, do we go do we pivot to nonprofits? Do we pivot to a mix and match? Is everyone comfortable with that? We can do for every nonprofit, we could do two businesses because that's sort of the ratio. And I think there's twice as many businesses as there are nonprofits. We can mix and match. I mean, there's all kinds of things. But what I need to do when I set the agenda, I need, I, I, I need some flexibility. I need to set the agenda in time and I can't keep going back to the committee and you got to cut me some slack. I didn't think that was going to be on the agenda. I thought we we're going to do you know, another one. I, I can't deal with that. But I, I think maybe the best thing to do is wait until the last of our meeting in the near future and then 
figure it out at, 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 at that point. I'm open to a mix and match. It's just, are you guys ready to go through the mental gymnastics of switching from getting used to the nonprofit criteria, pivoting over to the other and so on and so forth. It can get, you know, it can get a little complicated. We're going to get into that later tonight. So we're going to continue on. Craig. Um, so I actually let you agree with that a lot. Um, I think that you know, I try to be fair to everyone and I think it would be appropriate to be alternating reasons. So we need not profit, we have to do the businesses, we have to, we don't have that problem. So um, at the end of the day, we're going to end up one time to be able to talk to the school. Um, but certainly if we have the one before or something, the front of whatever room we're dealing with, we have the story criteria, I certainly think focus on that for that particular batch. Um, at that time, I really, I really, it's hard. It's hard to do the application, and I I have no objection to applicants being in the room, but I'm concerned about interjection. Yep. It's coming up. I'm going to deal with that. Let's hold 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 that thought. We're covering that. Yeah, we're we're covering. Yeah. Yeah. So I gather you have for the next three meetings, if that's what it is, the next three meetings, you have no problem with my trying yeah. trying to pick the most basic programming type nonprofit applications to vote on. I would I would like one of those meetings to be business if we have those available to us. I I, I agree that we shouldn't be just focusing on the nonprofits that I think they're all important for various reasons. So um, I'm, I'm sure that these are some of these applications that um, are lower level intention that we could do. So that's what I would say. Carl. Right. We have about 25 minutes to the ministerial when we began our discussion. Someone mentioned the landing, which seems to be a nice exception about that. Um, the thing about alternation between our products and businesses is that the proportionality doesn't work because there are many more businesses. Right? So you're going to streamline the you know, products. Um, and then taking the, the, the low hanging fruit, as you put it, the, uh, the easiest ones, again, subjectivity. And my suggestion is you look at each one objectively, one should be a heavy lift versus another. The approach to methodology, the methodology is the same. I say, man, you say random. Random. And I do agree with Craig on, on, on well, that's, that's for another subject in terms of feedback and um, having the applicants appear because I think there's a well a, let, let me experience. yeah uh, all right that, that seems to be a distraction on 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 this issue. So let me let me just put that to bed um so we can get back to what we're trying to decide. I said earlier that aspirationally, I would send a copy of the agenda to um, uh, the applicants by email. Uh, I'm not following up. I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not entertaining phone calls. Gee, I can't make it that night. Can you put it over? I can't get, I can't get into that request for continuance. It upsets the apple cart, the, the process going forward. They can come, they can appear, and I will I will put a notice on there um, that there is no public participation and there won't be. And before every meeting, I will remind them there's no, no, no public participation. And, and, and that should that should be that. We have not yet talked about interviews. That's like number I or something. That's a heavy discussion. I mean, we're spending a lot of time on stuff that you're which are kind of minor right now, but we're gonna get to those interviews, which could completely turn that upside down, this discussion we're having. So we will get to that discussion about interviews, but not now. We're trying to figure out what do we do in the next three meetings or two meetings? That's what we're trying to figure out now. So. Yeah. Random, okay, Jacqueline. Um, I say random, however, I'm not happy to be there. I'm just missing two months and I'm just missing all the things. So neither are on one third, I'm just missing anything. Um, Mike, Glidden, you have not yet weighed in on this issue, have you? 
Uh, no, I did earlier. I'll take a pass. You can take a pass. Okay. Um, who's next? I think Jesse is next. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay with what the group ultimately decides. I think the problem you bring up about the scoring not being set creates an issue with being random initially. So we're going to have like to try to randomize people to receive drugs and things like that as far as my job. The randomization piece is already going to be thrown out the window because we aren't able to look at everything that's in that. You mentioned there's still a hiccup with the businesses as well in terms of the scoring. So I'm okay with you picking some out for us to sort of pilot and go through. Um, what I said earlier um, when you have to wait is that there are some applications that I believe have both components of program as well as hardship. So I think we'll have to keep those kind of aside until we get to the hardship piece as well. But I'm I'm fine with um, you know I agree with Amy that switching gears could be probably, you know, just picking up something and putting it down and picking up something and putting it down creates additional work and also creates additional nonsense that you have to kind of get into. But um, I like the idea of starting off with some that you pick. And then to Chris's point, if you really did want to randomize them, I can randomize them for you. Like if you really want, I can do a software where you choose randomize them. I can give them batches of five, ten, whatever you want. Um, I have no problem with doing that. Um, the other thing about businesses, and this is my last point, is that the business applications, the amounts, the grant amounts, I believe, are there is no limit on nonprofits, but the business ones do have a cap. So those might be actually easier to deal with, even though there's more. Because I do think when we get over the hundred thousand dollar mark, that's going to create a longer discussion. So that even if we go in, then we what if we went in with three that are all hundred thousand dollars? We need to the whole name is talking about the three and the three, 10, 25, Yeah, so let me let me in, uh, weigh in at, at this point. The business applications, because the cap is $25,000, even though the business applications outnumber the, um, the nonprofits um, two to one or three to one, something like that, um, the time it would take to do a business application it could be easily one third of the time it would take for a programming nonprofit that, that that has a lot of complications. I sense uh, from members of the committee that they're concerned about some sort of a, an appearance of equity, an appearance of balance. I'm not sure you phrased it that way. I'm trying to crawl under your head and figure out if that's sort of the, the value that, that, that you're trying to uh, protect. We, we, we can certainly do that. I mean, I, if, if that's a concern, we can certainly do that. Um, and I guess we could do, if we have three meetings, we could devote one of those meetings to um, one batch, one category, whether it's nonprofits or businesses, and, and the other two meetings to the other category. So, I mean, we certainly could do that. And it, and it would protect that interest of starting on both, addressing both, you know, equitable treatment of both, I, th I think, you know, that that, uh, so we're going to continue on around the table. Who's who did I? Who, where did I leave off? Bob, you just spoke, Jesse. Okay, Amy, did, you're all, you're good. Okay, so what? I'm not going to take a vote on this unless someone calls for a vote. Uh, agendas are typically set uh, by the chairman to do the best we can. Um, it, it's not voted on. So what I will do is. Um, Subject to our decision on whether we're going to go forward with the three meetings we have scheduled, we'll have one uh, one meeting for the business applications. We will have more in then, and two meetings on the nonprofits. And I will try not to make it a late night. I mean, I try to have a sort of a slender agenda because there's. There's a lot of thinking. There's a lot of preparation. I mean, I started to go through these and there's a lot of angles to, to these things. So that's what I'm going, that's what I'm going to do. One night of business, two nights of programming nonprofits, because we do not have criteria for the hardship nonprofits. 
with a, uh, an agenda going out to the applicants, no public participation, no question and answer. Um, and that's how we'll hand it, handle it unless someone wants to call for a vote, in which case we'll, we'll deal with that vote. Going once, twice, that's that. So that's, that's how that'll be handled. Um, I want, and then um, just, to, uh, where's Chris Regan? He's, he's somewhere up there. So after those meetings, we will then decide the more difficult question of randomization or so on and so forth. This is sure. a, the preliminary um, footstep that we're taking. Okay. I want to get to um, the conflict of interest again, because I got a letter from the law department what, yesterday. Um, Jesse, could you put up that? And I'm going to ask all of you in a minute when this goes up, I'm going to ask all of you to pull up the UHY portal and to scroll down uh, to those organizations and we'll go around the table. And I, I want to get those organizations that people are disqualifying themselves on. Some of you have called me, but I didn't organize it in a, in a list. And now I got to do that. And I'm disqualifying myself on two. So, uh, and the minutes got to be pretty careful on this, on the, the disqualifications. Okay. okay. Um, so the, you got an email from me. Um, it was a blind copy. You may remember about whether or not the committee should be signing something. And hopefully that's in your, your memory. Um, the, the resolution of that was, um, the consultant sent us a little summary of the federal conflict of interest um, policy. It is no different than what we discussed. It's no different than the Code of Ethics Wallingford has or the charter provisions Wallingford has. The only thing that is uh, in there that may be different or maybe is a little sentence. Well, first of all, let's pause on this. Let's pause on this because it's important to the consultant. It's important to the law department that we address this again. So you can't you can't participate if you have a conflict or there's an apparent conflict of interest. We discussed this, and um, it, it goes on to say, you know, when that when that might arise. Um, I represented uh, to the, the consultant and the law department that before each meeting, I would. Again, once again, review whether or not the applications for that particular night uh, give rise to a conflict of interest, whether or not you disclose it, and we'll get that out again. Um, and that every meeting we're going we're gonna to go through this just to be just to be very careful about it. Um, so that's what's going on. There is a little sentence in here in the last paragraph. Um, it says, um, if a committee member has a conflict, I don't know, see the second sentence in the last paragraph. If a committee member has a conflict of interest regarding a particular application, the member must not participate or vote. We knew that. The member should not sit with the committee, and the tear came to my eye on this one, uh, should not uh, sit with the committee on the particular matter and shall refrain from participating in any way, all of which we knew. Um, so that's not, um, that's not law. That's not ARPA. That's not code of ethics. That's the personal policy of the law department, but that's fine. Um, I think it's very easy if you have a conflict of interest, go sit in the audience seats while we discuss it. And um, so we're going to set up when the pub, you know, when the meetings start, we'll set up like 20 chairs in the back for applicants if they want to come and, and listen, just sit over there. And then uh, it's a matter of impulse control for everybody. Um, if we are discussing your particular favorite organization and you don't like what you hear, no yawning, gasping, dropping of phones or anything else. It's pure impulse control and you just got to sit there on your hands. And I, and I think, you know, that's how we handle it. Um, so I think that's, do, unless there's some, you know, question, I just wanted to get this out and then we can move on. All right. Going once, twice, we're gone. Okay. So that's that. Uh, I'll tell you if it is. <laughs> so, uh, I just, I just up yeah. And at the end, it says the applicant must be able to file a federal program by checking yes to a plan or not, right? 
this particular application they didn't check off yet. And yet it's, it's important. So um, I can't address that. You know, when that particular application, I can't address that now in this context. When that particular application comes up on the agenda. Why did it for us if we apply to prove that we haven't probably I just work here, you know, I don't, okay. So um, on the agenda, we're down really now, we've done 3A determination of which applications are put on the agenda. We've done conflict. I already discussed the homework. The real work is at home when you review the applications. We talked about notice to, to applicants and now we're on interviews. Um, we discussed this on October 21 at that meeting. Um, there was a strong consensus that we would not entertain uh, interviews. That's not binding. That was before we saw before we got in these application. It was always contemplated that we'd give that decision a second look. Um, I would almost promise you that when you look through some of these more complicated applications, particularly on the nonprofit side, particularly on the programming side, you're gonna have questions. Whether or not that means you should, we should have an interview is another matter. Um, but I, these, some of these applications raise a lot of questions. Um, having interviews opens up a whole, new, a whole new area of discussion. There's pros and cons, I mean, there, a lot of things, but that's to be decided tonight because the next time we meet, we're gonna be discussing applications. People are gonna be invited to come and watch. Um, so the decision on whether or not to have interviews and how we decide who and all that kind of stuff should be decided tonight. And there's another complicated, another complicating thing. Feature. Well, uh, I, I stumbled for a, a proper word, proper word and I ended up with feature. Oh, yeah. F E A T U R. I, I couldn't pull it out. Fire. Couldn't pull it out. Happens a lot. Um, how is, when do you decide, if you, when you do your homework um, and there's a meeting coming up in two days and you know this particular application is coming up to be discussed and it's 1130 at night and you're going through these and you say, oh my God, I got all kinds of questions. I want to talk to those people. So now what am I supposed to do? So you call me in the middle of the night, which is fine. I take calls up to 3 a.m. You're going to call me in the middle of the night, and I'm going to send out an email to the applicant the next morning, and I'll say, in two days, be here for an interview. And they're going to say, are you nuts? I mean, I, I just can't do that. So now we're in the situation of pulling that off the agenda, and it's too late to fill one in. And it's sort of a cascading problem that we've created for ourselves if we do it ad hoc. Yet we get to some of these complicated applications and you're going to say, Mike, you talked me out of interviews and I really wanted to talk to these people. Well, now's the time to figure it out. Uh, you know, you could say, and I think rightly so, they have one shot to put in a good application. Some of these applicants are very sophisticated. Sometimes they leave out information on purpose. No, I take that back. That's just a thought. It's possible, you know, they, they can't write an encyclopedia on their application. They can't address all the angles. We could think of more things that they could probably answer. Um, and if we have questions, maybe that just weakens the application. On the other hand, we're giving away hundreds of thousands of dollars. And some of these applications are, um, you know, with, 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 with some complicated uh, programming, you may want to have those interviews. You're the first hand. So we'll go, we'll go around, sorry, with Carl, and we'll just swing around the table. When it comes to me, um, someone keep me on us on this, we'll go to Mike Glidden and Chris Regan, and then we'll jump over to, uh, to Jesse. And, and that's how I hope, well, Carl. All valid points. However. <laughs> If there is an application that you individually need uh, that they should, they should be uh, given an interview, I think if others may not agree with this, then you should take a vote on those applicants. If it's a majority vote of uh, one percent or eight percent to be interviewed, the committee chooses that. But how do we how do we implement that? In other words, um, I. We randomize, let's say hypothetically, we randomize the uh, 
the, the organizations. We randomize those. Um, as soon as I get that, at least a week in advance, I throw out an agenda so everyone can start working you know, on it. And you have suddenly have questions and you want to bring it to my attention, potential for interviews. The meeting when the applicant shows that we're supposed to take a vote, we first vote on interviews, but that means we have to table the application unless the applicant is here. I'm not, I'm not arguing against it. I'm just saying implement, ease of administration matters, you know. Um, Craig, you, we're gonna circle back. We, we can't, we can't, yeah. Okay, you're coaching. Okay. Uh, yeah, we said uh, requesting pressure, right? You know, $250,000, $150,000. But you may have an application where four of us, you know, I really want this person to appear in front of us. Um, you take a vote electronically, you can vote as a, as a team here. Well, in order to vote electronically, we have to conduct a meeting, and the meeting is open to the public. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Minutes have to be taken, you know, but, uh, Bernadette needs the cash. Yeah. You know. So let me rephrase this. I'm trying to help you here. I'm not, uh, we, we could set a policy now that there's a presumption that there will be invitations to be interviewed, we can't force them, no subpoenas. Uh, and the presumption is all applications over a certain dollar amount. Uh, you, you said 300,000, I'll, I'll go along. Example, we'll go 300,000. Yeah. There's a presumption of an interview for all applications over 300,000 and the notice, the agenda could say, um, I could star it. I could say your application is, Qualify, you know, is a three hundred thousand dollar plus. Show up, be ready to be interviewed, and if you don't, you, 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 it's at your peril. And if they don't show up on that night, we're left to our own devices and just do the best we can. Is that capture what you're trying to say? Yeah, it does. Okay. It does. All right. So I'm let's make. Angry. Okay, so let's make that the operative model and we're going to Jacqueline and then we'll. Um, thank you. Um, I can do that. Administratively that, administratively that works. Um, it will slow down the process, believe you me. Um, it, that's okay, you're aware that what might've been a 45 minute discussion now is an hour and 45 minutes, but that's okay. If it take if, if if it takes that long to do a thorough job, answer our questions, just alerting you to that. And it's not an argument against it. It's just we, we could put out an invitation that does not need to be accepted. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to um to uh, Chris and then Mike Glidden and then over to Jesse. So Chris Regan. Sure. I, I I do agree with Carl um for the you know, actually in its entirety. So I would agree. Okay. With, that, a, dollar, that, with a, a dollar threshold, I mean, the interview process for the high ticket items, you know, will give the opportunity for them to be interviewed for us. I would like to cap it at no more than 60 minutes, or let's come up with a, with, with some type of, uh, uh, of some type of list. And then perhaps even for other, um, mid threshold ones, we may submit a list of questions. That I can only, I want to just do one concept okay. at a time. Or can yeah. you, so, can you go along with 300,000? Yes. All right. Uh, Mike Lidden. So, uh, I agree. It should be a, a set dollar amount. However, I do not agree at 300,000. I think it should be a hundred thousand. Um, I think that that's, you know, it gets a, a net that gets the complicated, a few other ones that maybe we miss if we go up to 300. But I think for the fairness of the applicants and they understand why, why were we calling them in? We deem that there's a number that says this is complicated due to programming, et cetera, come in, you know, and like you said, they're not forced to come in, but it's in their interest. And then what Chris said, I know it's an issue we want to talk later. I, I, I think that 
that's something that the chair could handle through uh, setting the agenda where, you know, at 6.05, we start with applicant A, they, we're going to go to 45 minutes at 6.50, applicant B is the next one. You know what I mean? That's that's a management on the on the agenda side. Yeah, that we all can agree to. Um, yeah, that's a good idea, and I can. I'll I'll, I'll 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 craft some agenda language that indicates time slots, and that also serves the applicants well. If they're at the end of the list, they may want to know approximately when they can show up without having to wait two hours or three hours sort of like a court calendar and you're the last on the list and you got to wait for five hours while all the other speeding tickets are taken care of. I, I um, would just stress that we, 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 we tell them it's a hard cutoff, whatever that, whatever, how we set it up on the agenda, like that's your window. Yeah. I'm not a hard cutoff guy. Though. Okay. We will, we'll sort that out. But we can, that's so this later. you're a hundred thousand dollar guy. You're a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand dollar guy. Okay. Uh, Jesse, uh, Bob, Amy, Rob, uh, Craig, Jesse. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree that interviewing is going to take added time. It's not opposed to it, but I don't know how much time I should have given the scope of what we have to do. So, dial on out and go to 100,000 on the time list, putting them on the agenda. If they come and they don't get down, I'm going to do it all. Yeah, I'm opposed to interviews and dialing out the other words. I think you understand how many of them are going to Have you looked at these nonprofit amounts. Amy? Um, I like the idea of the use, I like the lower amount around 100,000 is a good idea. Um, I am thinking maybe this is a related discussion point about how scoring their application comes in to the interview process. If their average score that we give them is a 50. Um, does that trigger coming in for an interview or is it just that? I'm going to ask you to back up because I got too much feedback. Hold on one second. I apologize. Would you just go over the last couple of sentences? How does interviewing impact the um, scoring of the application? So if okay. we score the application and because we have questions, we score something at a 50 and it averages out to, to a 60 between all of them. Does that trigger the energy then also? Or is that just you scored low on the application? Yeah, so let's let's talk about that now before we go around the table again. Um on mega on mega applicant, I'm, I'm gonna talk about a little more than what you raised, but it'll it'll get addressed. Um, we come uh, we come to a meeting. ABC Corp is on the agenda. It's more than a hundred thousand. I'm going to use that as the upper number. That seems to be more popular. Uh, they're on the agenda, and the way I'm the meeting has to stay focused and under and under somewhat control. I mean, it, so I'm I'm thinking the applicant is cordially invited. We give him a cup of coffee or something, and there is an order to the questioning. Um, and we'll just have to feel our way through that. And the applicant is, and you have those questions in advance. Everyone has a shot, maybe, maybe two shots. There's opportunities to clarify and so on and so forth. And then the interview stops and it's time for us to debate you know, the way we usually do, and we score. And what the applicant said has a bearing on the score. If they add new material to the application, we got a problem because they're enhancing, they're amending the written application, they're changing their mind, they're feeding off some criticism or weakness, and they say, oh, no, I can solve that problem. I promise to do such and such and such and such. That's a real that's a real problem. And I think we've got to take the application as we find it. And if there's an enhancement to it, it's tough to figure out if that's a clarification or an enhance. I mean, just that's really tough. 
And the, the law department is probably going to incorporate the application by reference in the contract. And then they've made a verbal representation that doesn't appear in the contract and that has to be addressed somehow. Um, so the, 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 the interview has got some landmines, especially administratively as to how we're, how we're gonna deal with that. I don't know. I, I, that's a. I don't have an answer to that right now. <laughs> Rob. To your point, if we interview them, you know, I'm going to suggest that if there's some questions that we have the application, submit that in writing to the person who submitted the application to explain whether you interview them in, uh, in person or if you allow them to write an answer. It's the same thing, right? They're giving you an opportunity to uh, not only clarify, but they're also giving you an opportunity to introduce an alternative thought process from the original application to the version. So I think you're opening up a can, regardless of which direction you're going. So I would suggest it be limited, and I think we have to make a judgment based on the application the way it was written. Because I think you're going to open the can once. Yep. And I think if you, if you grant somebody an interview at over $100,000, or if someone's asking for 95 or some, you know, it, it, I'm just I'm trying to keep things very simple, very black and white, and structured. Because if you've got to please everybody, I think you're just going to end up with them. Hold it. Simple, structured, you had another word. Uh, I forgot what you had. Yeah, I, I I'm trying to, I'm trying to milk you here. I want to keep things that the applications were written, they had an opportunity to answer the application. I think the more we, Allow that to be opened up, the more trouble we're going to get. And I think it's a very slippery slope. Yeah. Uh, and I don't that, want to in three or four months have people get to the point where they say, let's start all over. I, and I can see it happening. So I would like to avoid it at all costs. My suggestion is too strong. They submit an application. We're going to have to make some assumptions. So um, the, the way I'm thinking about it now, if if the interview process gets too far afield from the text, the four corners of the application, uh, the chairman is gonna have to come in and um, correct that and either throw out the question as not relevant to the four corners of the application or something and I don't want to get into a brouhaha as to, well, no, let them answer, you know, that kind of thing. And so they, that's a slippery slope and I'm going down it. I can see, um, it's okay. I can, you know, we'll do that. But, uh, but, uh, but I, I, need, I need, I need some flexibility to do that. Um, but I'm, I'm aware of this problem. So, um, Craig. So, uh... I think it would be a little piece of chair. I'm glad I'm lost. This is the one thing that I need to talk about. I have an adverse community, okay? It was just because of all the things we discussed. However, I, I think, you know, the uh, very high dollar amount, it may be who was to have that ability to ask. The question. What I don't want to get into is like Shark Tank now, where they come in here and make a presentation, they bring kids and it's all cute, and, and you know, and then somebody gets a little bit of an ability and, and that kind of stuff. You know, so that's why I, I don't agree with some of that because you're going to end up doing a lot of it, and, and it's going to become a, a, a dog and pony show, and, and it should be the application. I, I would suggest that. Um, you know, it's a smaller group. You don't have to do all the interviews on one night. You can say, okay, we're doing applications this night. This is our one interview for that night, right? And that way it's easier for us to deal with, easier to plan. And that's the reason why, if you know, the outset, this is the threshold if we're going to do that. You know, these are the five, and based upon our calendar, we can slot those five as opposed to. We've gone through the application and now it's like, oh, well, we should bring these guys in. It's a different, it's different. Well, um, to, to address that point, that's what I raised like 15 minutes ago. Uh, without a presumption of an inter 
with an interview, it becomes impossible to administer. If you have a presumption of an interview, everything over 100,000 or 300,000, you have that presumption. We don't know if, we don't really know if questions are going to be asked or not, because that's going to be on the agenda interview, you know, required or something like that. They come in, we, there may or may not be questions. There may be an hour's worth of questions or five minutes worth of questions. And merely because they're in here for an interview, don't manufacture questions. Just be, I mean, just don't do that. That make good on your word to bring them in an interview. But administratively, if these are randomized, you know, if that's where we're going, um, the different applicants have to be starred. You're coming in for an interview. So I think I missed your point, Craig. Well, but take my words and then tell me where I missed your the point. The question was, I think the way you were laying out was, we decided that five individuals at a certain level of interview. So we have a night of interviews. And, and I'm just suggesting that you, you take those five and spread those over. So you, you know, you have a night of reviewing applications that don't have to be, and you have, let's say, one of those interviews. It's still part of the, uh, the randomization, but it's one of the things I want to mention. So right in the thing. Um, if you put any questions in writing with regard to this, you just ask at the start. You get the response, and the group of sort of prompts them um, in, in furnishing you with the application, and the response opens the door to exactly what you were saying before. And you, as the chairman, can't sort of, well, I guess that you can see it before it back to us. Um, but you know, let's say they put a powerful presentation uh, in response to that. You know, that is supplementing their application, not necessarily answering a question. So I would rather do it regularly. Where did we start? Did we start? Yeah, we started. Okay, you started with 300,000. I sort of went there. It became 100,000. Yeah, you may, you're up. But we mean you're the one who said three hundred. I said three hundred thousand as, as, as a threshold for interview. Okay. But generally speaking, if we, I'm, I'm just suggesting if we're going to go in that direction, it has to be a high dollar. So if the if the first proposition before the group was interviews or no interviews, um, and then if dollar amounts to be decided on another question. All right, it's bifurcated. Would you vote no on interviews? And, and if that's the sense of the committee, then there's no interviews, don't go any further. If the interview, the answer is yes, depending on the dollar amount, then we'll decide the dollar amount later. I mean, tonight, but. I'll, I'll say okay, that's what I wanted to hear. And that's what I wanted. So Amy, um, I, I mean, Jacqueline. No, no, <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm I'm a no interview guy. I, I think the price we pay is too steep. I'm going to have questions. I know, but I'll live with what I have. And if they get marked down because of it, then you know. But I I think I'm I'm a no interview guy. We're going to the screen, Chris, and then uh, Mike Lydon. Uh, I'm yet a yes on interviews. That's would you repeat that? I would be a yes on interviews. You're against interviews. No. Uh, yes, I'm for them. Yes, on interviews. Oh, you want interviews. Okay. Uh, Mike Lynn. I'm also, I'm going to follow Chris's lead. I'm a big thumbs up. Yes. My volume was that. You want interviews, depending, and the I'm, dollar amount we'll figure out in a minute. Yes. Okay. Jesse. Uh, I think I, 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 I,
Jews. And it's going to create all kinds of. And I, and I agree too. The applications are in there, right? Like, here are the instructions, here are the applications. I mean, I do I mean, if, if the group decides to be, I say we're not to be hot. So that's a good Bob Gross. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah, Bob Gross. This is not complicated. I uh, in Philadelphia's application, the bands being the way not in the use, you do not like that. Right. So they focus out if they stay on the ground. So, and once that goes by, then pretty thorough. So, I'm comfortable with my music. Rob. <laughs> right, you did. And Craig was no winner to lose. All right. Yeah, you, you get an accommodation. We've given out millions of dollars for applications, and we deny millions of people that the applications work done thoroughly and completely on the PPP. And we've given out $10 million to our company, and we've not granted it. So um, I'm, I, I will make uh, I will make the motion. Let's see. Hold on one second. No. Um, if if someone wants to make a motion to have, I would I would I'm going to vote against this, but I want to I want I want to phrase right. So I would entertain someone make the I would entertain a motion that we have interviews over a dollar threshold. If and that should be second, hold one sec. And that should be if that doesn't carry by seven votes, because that's moving it off the status quo to another level. So if that doesn't get seven votes, it's over and there's no interviews. If that gets seven votes, then we have to decide on the threshold for the interviews. So someone, the pro interview on the pro interview wing, make the motion to have interviews on a dollar threshold. And I see, who did I see raising their hand? Someone wanna make that? Someone's pointing to the screen as if someone made that motion. No. Oh, okay. Does someone wanna make, wanna make that motion to have interviews? So I'll, I'll make a motion. motion that, I'll make a motion that we have interviews um, and that we will, uh, and determine the dollar amount. Should yeah, be. yeah. Are you making that motion? I'm making that motion. I'm not putting a dollar amount in it. I'm just going to say have have interviews and let's determine the dollar amount next. I'll second. Okay. So your voice skipped out, but I think the motion on the table is to have interviews subject to a discussion on the dollar amount. Did I capture that right, Mike? Yes, you got I did. It. And it was seconded by, by Chris. So... So the vote is on interviews, a yes by seven votes and we'll have them, otherwise we won't. Uh, Carl, do you understand the motion? Are you, are you sure you're, you know, you're comfortable with the motion? If you vote yes, you're voting in favor of interviews and it'll take seven votes to have them. And then we'll debate later on another vote, the, the threshold. Yeah. Okay, you're in favor of interviews. That's why I'm sure we're clear and there's no miscommunication. This happens on the council all the time. And so I want to make sure we know what we're doing here. So the vote is for no interview. No, the vote is for to have them. No. You're a no vote. Okay. Carl is a no on interviews. Mike is a no on interviews. We're down to Craig Fishbein. No. That's a no for Craig. Uh, Rob Fritz, the no on interviews. Mike Glidden. That's a yes. Is a yes. Bob Gross. No. No one interviews. Jacqueline. No. No one interviews. Chris Regan. Yes. Did you say yes? Yes, that's a thumbs up. Jesse Reynolds. No. No one interviews. And an Amy. No, so that so there's no interviews. They will still be invited 
to attend and watch, right? And the agenda will still say no participation, no grunts, no groans, no anything like that. Okay. Hold on. All right. I think at this point, I want to get out of the way before I forget. Who has, who is recusing on what organizations? I want to go around the table. This is not your last chance to do that as you go through. If you see another place, another organization, you need to recuse, speak up. We're going to do this before every meeting, but I want to get going now. I'm going to start with myself. And Bernadette, again, we got to be very careful about this, okay? Mm -hmm. So Mike is recusing on the Wallingford Land Trust and WPAA. Uh, Jesse, well, no, wait a minute. We're gonna, I'm, I get in a rhythm, and if I break it, I'll forget these guys. So we're, we're going to go to Chris and then Mike Lynn. I will have to recuse myself on Connecticut STEM Academy. Connecticut STEM Academy. Mike Lydon. I will have to recuse myself on the Hungarian Club. Hungarian Club. Jesse. None so far. None so far. I've not looked at them all, but none so far. Nor have we looked at them all. They're just not, they're all not available. Uh, but I, I, I want to get the tradition started mm -hmm. that we do this and we do it carefully and willfully, you know. Bob Gross. Beth Israel Synagogue and Coalition for a Better Wallingford. Amy. Which academy? STEM. STEM Academy. Did you did we drive you off? I was called Dave. Oh, okay. Rob. Uh, oh, okay. I didn't even spell C O L. C O R. C O. Okay. Cobra Auto. Cobra. Number 22 on the businesses. Okay. Craig. I do admit that I'm not involved with this community at the level of Jesse, and I have nothing to do with None yet will underline yeah. yet. None yet. Carl. Um, had the Capella Grace of Finishing and Cobra Auto. Cobra and the, the Academy, the, the hairdressing, what's the name of it again? Capella, what was it? Carl, the first one you mentioned? Uh, I'll briefly then. Cobra, Cobra, Grace of Finishing oh, and Academy. Abrasive and Academy. Spell the last one. And abrasive finishing. 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 Finishes. Okay. Jeff. And what? Symphony And a question mark regarding the Question mark. Question mark. The Wallingford Senior Center. The Wallingford Senior Center. Is that what you said? Yes. Wallingford Symphony and the Senior Center. They put in Senior Center put in an application. I believe. So. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I didn't come across that yet. What was the question? Coalition for the Wallingford. All right. 
we got everybody, I think. Okay. Um, so I, I want to uh, want to get in. What? I went first. I said land trust and WPAA. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad someone's watching. Just <laughs> um, I want to get into um, the scoring a little bit, you know, how, how we're going to start off these meetings and the idea, the end, the end goal is that um, when we come to a meeting to assess and vote on applications, we know exactly what we're doing, how we're going to start, how we're going to proceed, so on and so forth. And what happens? So there's, we're all organized and ready to go. We've covered a lot of that ground with the agenda. We've covered some of that ground with which organizations will appear. A lot of that is to be determined uh, for later in February. But um, I wanted to, I wanted to start with uh, a, a personal overview of ARPA and, and its interplay with the local criteria because. It can be confusing, at least initially. So maybe this will help and that's the intent anyway. Uh, when, you, when we look at, uh, and Jesse, if you could get your finger on the trigger, maybe to throw up the criteria, let's go with the business criteria and just throw that up. And while I, while I sort of pontificate here. Um, it's in the backup, but you know, I didn't number the backup documents, but it's in one of the documents I emailed to you in the last couple of days. It's a criteria for business applicants. So under, I'm just going to wait for that to come up on the screen, I think. We had it. Uh, we had it before, Jesse. You had it on the screen when we were pre-meeting. Might be up on the screen already. I mean, behind the. Well, maybe not. Wait a minute. You have it. Okay. There we go. There, there we go. Bingo. Can you put that back up? Yeah. Okay. Um, so quick five minutes on ARPA. So federal, the federal government um, decided that um, it would channel money to local municipalities and other things. This, I mean, this is a, sort of a condensed version. Municipalities had great flexibility in how they were going to do things, but it had to comply, you know, with ARPA requirements. And the, the sense of ARPA is that there could be ways that municipalities could address the adverse health impacts and the adverse economic impacts of businesses and nonprofits and other things too. I mean, we're just condensing this to the relevant to the relevant. Uh, uh, in relevant criteria here, the situation. So um, the first row uh, says that the proposed project will address the negative economic or and or health impacts due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That has to be... Uh, that has to be true or you don't even get down to scoring on the other rows because ARPA said the whole point of these billions and billions and billions of dollars is to address the negative economic or health impacts of COVID. We're going to give money to the states and, you know, and to the towns and they have great flexibility. They can, they can do what they want. So whether or not the project addresses 
COVID, there has to be a link between the application and the use of the money and, and, and COVID. I'm not sure I explained that right. There has to be a connection, a nexus um, uh, between what they want and what they're trying to do and the pandemic. And if that doesn't exist, they're rejected. And the criteria for, um, for ARPA is different than the criteria for the town of Wallingford. The town of Wallingford now can decide how it wants to distribute money using its own criteria. And that is not to be confused with the ARPA criteria, not to be confused with the federal criteria. The federal criteria are you know, bigger, badder, broader, so on and so forth. And UHY is, has been hired to screen the applications to make sure, I mean, I don't wanna say make sure, to do the best they can to make sure the applications pass muster on the federal ARPA requirements, but the local requirements are in our hands. So the town of Wallingford can set its own criteria as long as it, it, it doesn't violate the greater boundaries of the federal requirement. <laughs> so in, in discussing just in general life, as you walk down the street or cocktail parties or go to friends and someone says, well, ARPA allows this, that may be, but it doesn't mean Wallingford allows it. There's separate authorities. And whether or not um, UHY, the consultant, um, whether or not they thought it should be passed on to us, there's a lot of, in my personal opinion, a lot of subjectivity in this. There is not, a, there are not a lot of specific, they're not court cases that give you specific guidance. There's a lot of judgment involved. Um, again, it, it's subjective, but when it comes down to us, we can assume that the general parameters, of, or general requirements of ARPA have been satisfied. So we shouldn't be discussing whether or not it complies with ARPA. That is now irrelevant to our discussion. There's exceptions to every rule, but I mean, as a general, as a general proposition, that's true. What we need to be concerned with, and the only thing is whether the application, the information in front of us complies with these criteria. And this happens to be the, the, business, the business criteria. So although um, states and towns can adopt programs to address the negative economic and health impacts of COVID, if you're giving grants away, it has to be a hardship. Let me just repeat that because it's a different criteria. If the town wants to do all kinds of things, it can do that, you know, to help people that were impacted. The town can do stuff. But if one of the things they're doing is to give grants out, it has to be a hardship grant. This local criteria is intended to fit that. So um, we first need to decide that first row, um, you look at the application and that's all common sense. It is you know, is there a logical connection between the application and the adverse, you know, impacts of the pandemic or is it too much of a stretch? 10 people in this committee could come to 10 different conclusions and reasonable minds can differ over the same point, even on the same information. You can. We're all not going to think alike, not going to try to get everyone to agree on stuff. It's impossible to do and there's no point in doing it, but we got to find out some way that um, seven, of, seven of say, yeah, close enough, they, 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 they pass the first row. No score on that row. There's no score on that first row. The, the, the other rows all have scores and they add up to 100%. So for, for businesses, um, they're basically hardship, um, they're hardship grants and we're going to have to decide what that means. And if you know, the question comes up, well, is that a hardship or not? I, I turned it back on you. I make up your own mind. Uh, use your common sense. Look at the data. You do the best you can with it. I mean, hardship is, a, to some people, a certain set of facts is hardship. Someone else is not. Um, but it's broken down into these, into these rows. So businesses have one pathway to get money, and that's hardship. Nonprofits 
they have two ways to get money. One is hardship. Very, it's going to be probably very similar to the criteria you have on the on the row. In which case, in which case, if that if that nonprofit, let's say, I mean, the common example is they couldn't fundraise. Okay, that's a negative economic impact. You know, um, they they get to the second, third, fourth, and fifth row. They may not get a very high score on those rows, but at least they get to have us continue on with the assessment. Um, so the the nonprofits will have criteria that look something like that. They're going to have to show that they were wounded, their their own organizational finances were wounded sufficiently by the pandemic. And one of those one of those criteria is proportionality. And, and that's in the, I'm not making that up. That's in the federal guidelines. You know, that's all over the place. Proportionality. You can't show one dollar of adverse economic impact and get a hundred thousand dollar roof. That's not proportional. Uh, the the actual the economic impact is supposed to be measured from I think it's March 20, 20 uh, 2021. Um, ideally, we're supposed to measure the economic impact from that day forward. And the grant has to be, you know, proportional to that. It doesn't mean whatever that means to you. It's not a perfect, you know, match, but um, so that's how that works. And the other way nonprofits can get money is through programming. The, the nonprofits that offer programming do not have to have suffered a negative economic impact or a health impact, but their clientele does. So the people they serve need to have had an adverse impact, economic or health. And it's a pass-through. The, the government, Wallingford, is hiring basically a nonprofit to do what the town of Wallingford could do if it chose to. But instead, it has a, call it a contractor, because they will have a contract. Those nonprofits are all going to have contracts, just like the businesses are. And, and they're going to have to demonstrate periodically that they are doing what they say they're doing. So, I can think of an example where clientele didn't suffer, right? I can give you an example, and this is ridiculous, and I'm intending it to be, sure. but just to illustrate the, the point. So, this applies to all nonprofits, and the uh, Wallingford Country Club says, I'm a nonprofit, and we suffered an economic impact because our fundraising was down, our bar, our bar sales are down, so on and so forth. So maybe, maybe they get by the first row, but they can't go any further because they say, we're gonna use our $100,000 request to put in a new putting green. And to the clientele that are gonna be using the Wallingford Country Club's putting green, have they suffered an adverse economic impact or a health impact? And excuses like, well, the fresh air is good. Is probably a bridge too far. So the, the the country club isn't serving the clientele that unless they can demonstrate they are, but they're not going to be able to, but it's the burden is on them to at least facially explain how their clientele suffered an adverse economic impact and their putting green addresses that. On the other hand, you might have, and you will have, and you will see nonprofit organizations that are serving clientele that have been economically challenged even right from the start and even more so because of the pandemic and the the the, the more challenged socioeconomic groups are more or less presumed to have been according to ARPA you know uh, presumed to have been adversely affected so things like uh, health and education and welfare type nonprofits those that serve clientele that need health education welfare and so on and so forth that's an example of of a nonprofit, not prejudging, um, but let's say the Boys and Girls Club, I'm not prejudging their application, but clearly there's a distinction between the Wallingford Country Club clientele and the Boys and Girls Club clientele. And that's our challenge is to find that line. And the first line, I respect Bill Flowers. They have to have a product. If you don't have a product that it isn't just negative economic. So, so you're, are you asking about the definition of project? No. Oh, okay. For uh, okay, so I guess you're explaining the project could be 
uh, re-establishing entity as an entity or something like that. Is that what you say? We, one more time. Are we, um, so you are not at the financial or service level that you were pre-pandemic and the project is to restore those services. You're, you're saying for nonprofit, you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. If 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 you're in the programming pathway, the the nonprofit could say we want to restore, or the nonprofit could say we're having additional programs. Yeah. This I'm, I'm looking at this one. So yeah. This one requires a project. You're talking about the top row, or the second row, the yeah. thirty point. Yeah. Right. You don't get past uh, right. Yeah. Right. This is the business. Doesn't matter. It's it's going to say the same on the nonprofits. The language is going to be identical. The top row on both are going to be identical, because there has to be a negative economic impact, either way, either to the clientele, either to the clientele, or to the organization. But it's got to the way I read it. It's yep. got to be full. It's got to be. You got to have a product. And then you got it, and, and the product has to address the negative economic impact. So, as a result of the pandemic, a business was unable to uh, sell ice cream. Our plan is to sell ice cream and granola bars now. So, you know, we're expanding. I think both products to get back on our feet. Yep. Is that, it doesn't have to be everything, or is it just I had a bad time during the pandemic? I'm just looking at that sentence and trying to meet that checkbox. What is required? So, so I'll I'll wander into that swamp at your invitation. A the, the term project I wouldn't get hung up on. That is basically a use of the funds, a, a use of the money to do something, and that something has to have a link to the pandemic. So, if it's your if if we're talking about a business. Um, they could argue, and I'm not prejudging, but they could argue our business was wounded to the point of a hardship and we need money to recover, get on our feet, become stronger, pick, pick one, pick whatever you want. And how effective that is, how credible that is, is up to us. But there needs to be a logical link between the money that we give them and their recovery, and they have wide latitude to spend the money any way they want, and that is the project. So if they say it'll help us recover if we add another flavor of ice cream, and to do that, we need another bin, and we need to upgrade inventory or some such thing, we may reasonably decide close enough. Did I address your question? Okay. Um, no, the council has very little legislative history. <laughs> I gotta say. I started out by saying that. I started out by saying that. I started out by saying there are 10 different people in the room. We're not gonna get 10 people to agree. We're not gonna try. Um, but there is going to have to be a passing grade on the first row. And after that, it's the Wild West. And, you know, it reads the, to, like the second row, the degree to which the pandemic created the, the adversity. Well, it could have been a bad business model. It could have been a lot of things that, that uh, I'm, I see. Uh, is one last sentence that I've done. So if, 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 if the evidence before you and common sense indicates that the pandemic really had very little to do with what's going on. You may give them a you know, very low score, but you may conclude the pandemic had a lot to do with it. I don't know. We may not even have the information to make that judgment, but. The question is that if low score, there's enough money to go around, but we still score, and we still down the need. We're going to have to decide what low score is too low when they get nothing, and that's on the agenda. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. Right? It's well, well, there's some argument too because they don't Hold, hold on. I, I, I want to let me get to Rob and then we'll, Rob, you had your hand. One question then is on jurisdiction. Uh, even though the application may request a business for a business $25,000, uh, do we have the uh, 
Ability to yeah, absolutely. So we can, we can, we have that ability. That's yep. The other thing I would suggest is, uh, and Janice Small, the partner, has a copy of the article that we talked about from the federal government. And I think what's important for all of us, since we're going to be uh, judging this, I think you did a great job summarizing, and I agree with all, a lot of the points that you made. But to your point, everybody might have a slight interpretation. Yeah. So I think it removes everybody uh, and maybe get Janice to make seven copies of the document. It's not that involved. Maybe 20 pages or 15 pages on the drug. Well, oh. Rob, Rob, let me, let me, the ARPA. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. Wait. We can't take minutes. We can't have a Zoom meeting if we're cross. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be a dictator, but it just isn't going to work. The, the ARPA legislation runs into the hundreds of pages. The relevant sections do not. You read the relevant sections, and in my opinion, they're so vague, loose, and when it comes time to apply that to concrete facts, what? Why did I read this? You're better off reading that because ARPA is no longer relevant. The, the stacks of stuff dealing with ARPA, explaining ARPA, no longer matters. UHY has taken care of that. We just got to focus on this. So if in our discussions there is a default to, well, ARPA says this and ARPA says that, no, forget it. That's not the issue. The issue is the degree to which it is demonstrated that the applicant's proposed project will assist the business in long-term recovery from that adversary, not a temporary fix. The interpretation of those words, you can have 10 interpretations and that's fair. And that's why in October, we decided, not finally, we got to decide that tonight to average out because you're not going to agree. You know, we all could have different scores. Um, so that's, a quick overview before we get to the mechanics. But any thoughts or questions on, on the overview before we get to how we're gonna do this? Okay, so let's take that down, Jesse. And uh, here's, here's how I imagine it, but it's just one person. Um, we, set, we set an agenda and when we get rolling in earnest, latter February, March into April, probably. Um, the preparation, uh, you know, can be tiresome. And the meeting needs to be, and the discussion needs to be focused. So in the first couple of meetings, I was going to propose that on those applications, I would take the first swing at each of the applications to sort of maybe illustrate either what to do or what not to do in opening a discussion on an application. And so I wouldn't ask you to wander into that swamp if I wasn't gonna go there first. So I propose that I would take an application, those applications of the first meetings and introduce them for five minutes. And how I do that is really my style up to me, only me. There's nine other different ways of doing it. But I may say, I like this. This is pretty strong. I like it because of this, that, and the other. On the other hand, I know that this, is miss this information is missing or this is incomplete. And the claim of this, that, and the other is a bit of a stretch. And it looks to me like I'm going to give this a pretty mediocre score. Not great, but not probably not failing. I haven't decided. I want to hear from you first. And I may go through a couple of paragraphs and match how I think the criteria fits that application. I'm done. It goes to, you know, it goes around the table uh, to Chris Regan, Mike Glidden, Jesse Bob Gross, Amy, so on and so forth. And we go around the table and we maybe we go around the table first, uh, twice. But in the end, it's going to be time to put a score down and you would print out your own score sheets. You print out your own criteria because there's no one else to do it. So if we have 10 applications on the agenda, print, put out, print out 10 of those. And when it comes time to score, you put your name on it, put your date on it and the applicant and put your scores down. We'll pass them up and someone will be fixed with a 
adding machine with a tape. And with da -da 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 and we'll get an average of that score. This is consistent with our discussion in October. We would average it out. And that those score sheets are part of the public record with your name and date. The adding machine tape is part of the public record. Um, and we will know from the average score whether it was above or below the threshold, which we're going to set tonight. Um, we got to do that. It's quarter to nine, but we can we can do that, and that's how the mechanic that's how the mechanics that's how the mechanics would work. Um, thereafter, first of all, I don't have to do that, but I'm willing to do it. Uh, you, you know, I'm willing to embarrass myself first, and I'm not inviting groupthink by any stretch. I don't want a bandwagon effect. I'm inviting other perspectives, and I will probably throw in conflicting you know, opposite ideas, even on my own, my own assessment, because there's doubts in my mind too. Um, and you would know that I'm taking the first swing because I would put an asterisk on the agenda or my initials, MB, 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 and that I would take the first swing, maybe five minutes. Thereafter, we go around the table as usual. Thereafter, I am thinking that each of you take your share of asterisk or initialed applications and you take your fair share of introducing them for five minutes, taking the burden of preparation, because it takes a lot more preparation to do that than to just sit back and wait for four other people to go before you and react to what they're saying. You actually got to take the initiative to prepare. And Jesse, for example, would say, okay, um, here's how I see this particular application. He would lead off. He would take the risk, because it is, of going first, putting out his judgments, so on and so forth. If you don't want to do that, just let me know, and we're not won't put an initial next to your next to that agenda item. Uh, I don't want to draft anybody. Not everyone comfortable is comfortable in doing that, but it takes perhaps, you know preparation to do that. Um, and that's how I thought we would do it. And if there's let's say 175 various applications, 15 of them rounding severely would be presented initially by every one of you at various steps along the way um, until we run out of applications. But it gets everyone a chance to participate equally, take the risk equally, take the criticism and blame equally. You know, so, so. Someone had their hand up. Craig did, yeah. So I come back to something that was previous. Yeah. Harking back to the score sheet, it asks us to grade based upon degree. Yeah. So scale zero, he's thirty. How can we possibly grade application number one without comparing that to other applications? It's impossible. Because we are asked, I mean, and it, and it begs the question the scoring of the first application and being fair, because, you know, somebody may say, well, I was close for the pandemic. Um, I had no income. But their income usually was $5,000. The other application was $5,000. Their income over the same period of time was a hundred thousand, right? Degree of impact for those two applications is something different. So, so, so you naturally have to score them differently. You have to compare the two. So, on the first application, you you score it a five at what halfway at fifteen, so it gives you wiggle room back and forth. Was well, not necessarily fair to that application, um, and, and that's part of the problem. And that's why you're here. But no, I understand. So, but I heard before we shouldn't be comparing applications. You have to. But you don't have to take that advice. Well, no, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Well, it's it is a matter of degree. Look, there's no answer to that except when you prepare in your in your library at home and. You undoubtedly will remember 
the applications that came before. I think it's human nature. Absolutely, you're going to do that, if not consciously, subconsciously. And it is somewhat enlightening to see what other people, how other people address the same question. But every situation is unique. The fact patterns are not the same. And given that the job we have, I think that the best answer is we do the best we can. And it's not a perfect system. Uh, we're all flawed. We all make mistakes, uh, you know, and you could present the same set of facts to us on a Monday. It might, we might think about it differently on Thursday. I and mean, it's just, it's just that fluid and it is subjective. Yes, it's subjective. We're trying to objectify it as best we can with these rows of criteria. You know, we'll try to follow that, but everyone has a different, a, a different take on this. And, and so we're averaging scores. If you find it particularly difficult, I agree. I looked at a lot of these applications and I, I mean, this, these are tough. I think these are tough. Um, but in the end, we have to cast a vote and put on a score and it's somewhat tortuous. And it's, you know, I wish I could accommodate every preference you have, but we can't, you know. The degree is subjective. <clears throat> Carl, let me, I need, Bob was raising his hand a long, so I need to, I need to honor sort of that. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Meets the criteria. I don't care if they're lesser than somebody else who meets the criteria even better. It's a question, the council wanted the money or the town, some people in the council want the money to go to these groups. If they meet the criteria, why would not we want them to receive the dollars that are available for them as long as they meet criteria? We don't care what they score as long as they're meeting criteria. If they're scoring lower than Craig, if Craig scores higher than me and I'm right at the cusp there, I should still get my money if I meet the criteria. Am I confused here? I am. Why? Our job to but if they, score is not to. But what's the point of scoring? To potentially limit the amount of the grant. Well, let's say okay. chew, chew on each other's thoughts because I'm. Yeah, I will. I, you're not going to agree with each other, and let's. That's fine. That's fine. And there's 10 people. We're right. not going to agree with everybody. Well, you're you're not, Carl, you're not, Carl, I'm sorry. To say that, uh, I like what Greg says about comparison. The comparison principle works perfectly. You have two key metal manufacturers, same general industry, similar size and scale in terms of revenue. You can make that comparison. But we have an ice cream manufacturer, wholesale, retail, versus a manufacturer who take if you grade that ice cream retailer, even at 7,500, each quarter employee will measure based on the need and that individual thing and let the numbers fall when they can. So we can't possibly compare because, you know, one versus another organization or another type of industry that they might be in. To me, that only measures. Full integrity of the scoring system. If you have two similar industries, similar revenue, similar economic impacts from the natural environment, you're, you're telling me that as you go through these many, many applications, it will not reflect on a prior support of the but a prior application in scoring more than supported. Well, it is natural. It is a Like when I when I went from scoring grant applications, okay. Or this is a different for nonprofits. I look at that individual nonprofit because they need to take supply of the data. I'm looking at it at that moment because, as uh, I think Jesse said, you look at it one week later, you know, whether you're tired, whether you've had some, 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 some you know, digestion of, of wisdom over time, you make things different. I don't know, but that's what you're doing. You're scoring, and then, yeah. and then you so it's not a precise science. I think we all understand that. We all have our own internal frustrations and we're sharing them now, you know, which which is good. We, we're all going to have difficulty, but our 
individual difficulties are differ are going to differ from one another as evidenced by the discussion. Nevertheless, it's our job to come up with a score. And Craig, you're going to have your difficulties. You're going to just slay your own demons and come up with a score. Um, and, you know, again, it, it's very subjective. We've just got to do the best we can. Jesse, can you put up that criteria sheet again? And then, um, and get the other one. Uh, which one was that? That was the... You're absolutely right. I think the word you believe is subjective, right? Absolutely subjective. Absolutely. Amy. I see this as here's scoring is our ability to score the score that we have in the class. So if someone, if we believe someone in the housing process, all, even companies who were adversely impacted are proposing projects going forward. So if we believe that that project can effectively be done by this company, um, and then, you know, if, if, if it can happen, then they would receive a higher score. Um, if there's gaps that we perceive and they're not going to be able to execute, then this is a lower score. So therefore, the scoring does impact how we award the money. I see it that way. My question also then is whether we award person. No, yeah, so that is absolutely possible. And um, um, some applications have different components to it. Um, they're spending money on different things, all of which are um, packaged up in one application. So we could look and should look at each of those items that they want to do or programs that they want to spend money on, things they want to buy. And one could reasonably conclude this $12,000 item, that's a real stretch. They're saying the pandemic caused that or made a need for that, or that's really addressing the pandemic, or is that really something else? They're using the pandemic as a reason to include something that maybe shouldn't be included or something they wanted anyway, or we're gonna buy anyway or do anyway, but hey, we have a pandemic, put it in the application. You may not think that way. That's okay, I'm not asking you to adopt my, my view and you're not asking me to adopt your view, but that's where there could be a reduction. Um, and, there's a few that there's a few that could, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I mean, just when you review the applications, you know, uh, do that. And there might be some where a nonprofit serves people not in Wallingford, primarily Wallingford, or fifty percent in Wallingford, and I don't. That's that's real troubling. But we could one could say one might reasonably conclude they get not the whole thing but sort of a rough judgment on the Wallingford share. Don't know until we get there. Another example of where a grant may, may be reduced is this proportionality problem. Um, Using a crazy example, a a two hundred thousand dollar project, when their uh, economic impact wasn't near that, wasn't near that. And that's where the proportionality comes in. So that's a judgment you know we have to make, and we don't have a lot of tools for that. I mean that's problematic. We don't have precise financial tools. So someone raised their hand. I caught in my lateral vision. And the, Rob, you have yeah, seen Into this and then find that one application that just 
all the sort of Caesar and Yelp and other people for that. So it's not going to be a perfect world. I think just to take it on its own there. How do you compare an ice cream shop with a you know big manufacturer? You can't. You have to work with yep. the individual. Make sure that you're doing the right thing to what we think of as a time and spin the best other one. Yeah, I'm thinking so, the first few apps that he was exploring was in the same product. We may mature, use that word. We may grow. <laughs> you know. Well, yeah. Um, while we have uh, time and we, and we still have the, the mental energy, we need to decide what is pass fail, what score is good enough and what score is not good enough. Um, there could be applicants where every category is the thinnest stretch. Like the first one is, uh, you know, one point to 30 points. You could give one point, you could give 30 points. And there could be one application that is so thin, so weak, uh, plausibly, it's an argument, but who are you trying to kid kind of an application. Other words, just jump right out at you and say, those are really strong. So that's why they to the degree, to the degree. But in this case, we need to decide tonight, what is the breakoff point where they don't get any money? And here's what I'm getting at. Supposing they, I'm starting from the bottom, starting from the bottom. Supposing they propose a timeline, that's really good, and you give them 15 points. You know, they get the maximum, it's clear. And going up from the bottom, the degree to which the, the budget is appropriate and supported by documentation, let's say that's really thorough, really persuasive. So now they're up to 30 points. And now you say, well, um, this money will sort of help them in the long term. It's not a temporary fix. And that's, yeah, maybe worth 25. You know, it's the degree to which is demonstrated that the applicant's proposed project will assist the business in long term recovery. Tell me what money would not assist an applicant in long-term recovery. Of course it will. That doesn't necessarily make it a strong 40-pointer. And, and from that adversity, that's very definitional. What I'm saying is what money, you know, what money wouldn't help? It helps every business. And it's not going to be a temporary fix. Just let me, Amy, I'll get to you. Hold on. We'll, 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 hold the phone. So let's supposing someone in this room says, I'm not persuaded that they're getting 40 points, but I'm going to give them 25. That could happen. Maybe they're in doubt. And they utterly fail the, the top one. And you give them zero. So they got 30, 45, 55 points. And maybe they shouldn't get any money whatsoever because of the failing that first category. That's the dilemma. If they are so weak on the second row, the 40 pointer, should they get any money? If they only get scored 10 points on that, should they be able to add 15, 15, 10, and 25? And What's that? The person is probably out there. It's below your sort of hypothetical level. Jesse. Um, I agree. I think that what I was thinking is that they are looking at this as a metric that if they meet at least half of the criteria in each one, that would be a 50 out of 100. I mean, so that could be like, they have to get 50 to get be considered, right? That in excess of 50. In excess of 50, right. So 50 is a four. Hmm. If you're below 50. Supposing they utterly fail the first one. It did not create any financial adversity. Just didn't do it. 
didn't contribute to the clear, didn't you know contribute to the demonstrated clearly described financial adversity. The pandemic didn't do it. It was a bad business model. They utterly fail that first row. Why should they get any money whatsoever? They, 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 so say you but but not everyone's going to think that way yeah rob hold gang hold down let's just, yeah you're talking about the first line where it's uh before right that's a question well, the first row without a score, they have to, you're right, they have to pass that. But a negative economic impact does not equal hardship. Well, what I'm Mike, Mike can, can I interrupt? Can I, I, I got a suggestion. Can, how about this? For well, what I'm what I think I'm, I think um, I think really I think a, a concern is that a scorer could say this adversity is somewhat questionable in my mind. I'm not so sure it's adverse. I'm not so sure it's pandemic related. Pandemic could have contributed it to some degree, exacerbated de minimis. I think the the adversity is mm, somewhat questionable, and um, you know, ad adversity is subjective. What's adverse to one person may not be to another. I mean, if you're if you're reduced from I'll make the numbers up. Um, from 120,000 a year to 75,000 a year, some people would say that's adverse. Other people say not so much. You're going to get there for two different scores. And under that same set of facts, someone could say, yeah, that's a real adversity. Going down to 75,000, that's real adversity. They're getting maximum points. And someone will say baloney. They're only going to get 10. So we have the chance of a variety of scores, and that's why we're averaging them, but the cutoff is important. If you're weak on all of those or weak on one major one, really weak on the first two, the bottom two are just throwaways. But if you don't get you know, strong scores on the first two, the bottom two shouldn't save you. I'm not sure what the cutoff is, but it's well above 50. If someone doesn't get anything on the, on the, on the 40 pointer, they don't get any score there, they shouldn't get any money. And I hear your argument, Craig. Well, logically, they shouldn't do that. No, you can't impose your logic on them. <laughs> we don't know. Could, could I? Could I? Could I interrupt? Could I, could I, could I interrupt? And su suggest a tier approach on this one. How's this? So, so go by the scores. If someone scores between eight, one hundred and eighty-five, they get a hundred percent finance. No one's hearing me. I can hear you, Mike, but there's two conversations going. I know, I know. You kind of get where I was going, Chris. I no, I get it. I, I think this would solve this right Hold now. On, Jesse. It has never been considered that a weak a weak but passing application would get less money merely because they had a weak application. A weak but passing application, in my opinion, should get all the money they ask for if they're above the the cutoff. Uh, and, and chew on that for a minute. And Jesse, and well, if we're talking about we, the, um, if, if we look the, the example you used before, though, you went from the bottom up. I mean, you would, I don't think anyone could pitch 50 if they didn't get through the first two. In fact, you can't. 
And two, the second one, the 40 pointer is contingent on the first one. So if you can't demonstrate the first one, you shouldn't even be scoring the second one because it's these are contingent. No, you do get through the first one. You mean the 30 pointer? The degree which the pandemic created. No, no, I'm going to give them 15 points. And don't tell me, let me just interrupt you. Don't tell me I can't give them 15 point logic, but let me let me just finish my thought. And I'm going to give them 15 points. My business, my judgment, my criteria, I'm going to give them 15 points. And on the second one, I'm going to give them 20. And, and the argument, Mike, you logically can't do that. Yes, I can. It's me. It's my score. So they're really weak applications. And in the end, you know, the, the second, the bottom two don't count really because they're sort of automatic. I, so, I mean, that's the variety of scores come in and you look at it and you say, they were really stinky on the first two lines, but we passed them anyway. If that's what we want to do, we can. Yeah, Carl, I'm sorry. Let me ask you this question. How yeah. would you answer this question? How would you proceed? Yeah. You just, you just evaluated this particular application and now you just said it. This proposed project will not address the negative economic and or health impacts to, to the COVID 19. Why on earth would you continue on and even, and even pass that? Now you're getting even much more steeply subjective. If they have not met the required in the first line, I don't see how we can. Here's how. Here's how. Um, this is a successful business before the pandemic, a successful business during the pandemic and a successful business after the pandemic. It's been successful. During the pandemic, they weren't quite as successful, but they're making oodles of money before, during, and after. Oodles of money, very successful. They've had an adverse negative economic impact because they didn't make three or four sales, but they're rolling in dough. But they get the pass. They, 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 they did have an adverse economic impact but it's not a hardship by any stretch. So now they don't have a hardship. We come down to the 30, 40, 15 and 15 scoring rows. They've got by the first, first row and now we have to measure what is adversity to what it, was it the salesman just didn't make the sale. Their trend lines were down anyway. I mean, there could be a lot of questions and weakness in their argument. And so they got by the first row without that's required, but they're not persuasive on the first two. And that's why that can happen. Hey, Mike. You didn't uh, like what I said, did no, you? Mike, Mike, can I, can I interrupt? Oh, I'm sorry. And so, so does Chris. Let's spend some time with those guys because. So, uh, so could I, I got one uh, or two ideas. One or, one or two ideas how to proceed. One is set the bar at 75. You, you score below 75, you're getting zero. The other idea, I know you don't like this idea, would be setting up a scoring. So if you score between, a, your average is between 185, you get the grant, 100%. 84 to 75, you only get 75%. 75 to 65, you get 50%. Anything below 64, zero. That's the other, the only two ways I think it, it approach it. And I, I and, and at first I was, as this as this conversation is going, I was leaning towards the scale. I, I lean more of saying seventy five. If you're if you score below seventy five, you're getting zero. Period. And that's actually my motion. Hold on one second. Hold on one sec. Hold on one sec. Mike, mm -hmm. would you restate that slowly? So I'll, I'm going to make a motion that any applicant that receives an average score below 75 will not be awarded the grant. Hold on one second. Hold, hold on one sec. So the first concept below 75 point points, they get nothing, right? We captured that? Yep. Above. Okay, next. But above 75, 76 and above, they get 100%. 75, did I hear that right? 75 or above? 76 and above. What? 
76. I just, I just so, so there's a 76 separation. and above. And if they get a 75 in your motion. You're going home with nothing. 75 and below, nothing. Your voice went out. 75 and below, 75 and below, nothing. Okay. Okay. Everyone heard it, understood it, and, and so on and so forth. Yes. You what? Therefore, uh, Chris. I was going along the same lines as Mike, so I'm totally fine with that. 75? Yeah. Around the, let's start with somebody else. Jacqueline. Pass for now. Carl? Yes. You th this is not a vote. That we're soliciting uh, thoughts. You can support that notion. Yeah. It, oh, oh, okay. Craig? So the proposition is there anything less than 75 or less? 75 or less fails. You're going to pass for now. Rob? I, I, I like the fear approach. I, I don't think we should do it all or nothing. I think that uh, I think Mike and I think Craig also suggest earlier that zero plus. You get over to school to 75, you get 100%. You get 65, 75, you get 50%, 65, you get 50%, and then you get 75. At least you get, you know, people are not committed. You know, if you're really, if you're going to give somebody that is 70, 76, 100%, 75, happens, I don't think because there's so much self-activity in this, I think that you have to leave some gray area. You know, you know we're not equal to this. There's a lot of learning that we're going to do. And as Craig said earlier, really, we're probably still differently for the end of this process than for the beginning of the process. So I think we need to leave some flexibility. And I think we see too. Let me ask you this. Um, applicant puts in for 25,000 to buy a thing. It costs 25,000. We give them not 25,000. We give them 1650 because he's in this gray area. He can't buy the thing. Is that the result? You, it's, it, it's unanticipated consequences that I'm getting at with a question. I don't mean to be indirect, but they say, I can't buy the thing. I'm broke, I'm needy, I'm experiencing a hardship. It's a $25,000 thing. You only give me 16. What happens? Again, if, if you, you score based on the criteria, okay. the score of the, the score is you start getting into this gray area with every single application. We'll be here for three years and we'll still have to have resolutions and want to disagree. Yeah, you know what? If I were at $25,000, you could have been one of the I'd rather have 16 and I'm going to zero. <laughs> that's the case. We're, we're, we're not going to fit. There's going to be, we're not going to find a perfect formula for all these applications. And I'm the second one to agree with that. You're the first. Yeah. Yeah. We're right. Going to be forever. We, can't, we have to have a, a, a framework. It's not going to be perfect for everyone. That's just the way it is. But hopefully, we'll be fair and responsible. I'm I'm raising the hold, hold on, Craig. I'm raising I'm raising this to make sure we see all the angles, not to argue with you. The, these are likely going to be reimbursement grants. I think it's better than 50-50, it's a reimbursement grant. So the applicant gets his 16.5 and says, I can't buy it. I can't buy it at least this year. I'm turning the money back in. Is, is that part of the let the chips fall where they may kind of a result that you contemplate in? in once you start, I think once you start getting into the subcategory, well, okay, that's a special exception. We're going to become five. What about all the other people? You know, a lot of you didn't get these people not either. And I, even though I'm not buying a piece of equipment, I have a program that I want to find 100,000 for my profit. So long as 
Yeah. We're coming around. Have, have, have patience. So we, this concept of a gray area, where does the gray area start? What From what score to what score? Is it like a pro rata or, you know, a reduced amount? I think my head, I my head Tell me again. I, what was your... I think my said anything over 75 is 5%. Say 64 or 75, it's like 75%. And I, I think it's crazy. You know, 50%, 50 to 64, then you get 50%. Rob, okay. Rob would, you, would, you, would you want me to repeat that yeah. idea? Yeah, I still like it. You don't have 50% of your group. Um, okay, we're going to continue. We're going to continue around. So there's additional concepts, Amy. One is the one is the um, seventy five or low, nothing or a gray area. And if the decision is a gray area, where it's a reduced amount, will slay that elephant in another vote and another go around the table. Identifying the limits of the gray area is another discussion. My issue with the gray area is we only stuck to 75% in order for you the real value of the program, what we're doing is 75%. Um, I kind of like, you know, you develop a thing, you're gonna, you want to do this program, this is what it costs to do this, by equipment or whatever, to get you to where you want to be, to make a necessary, to fill the gap that the thing is going to be. So we're only going to fill the gap 75% or, you know, a percentage. Um, you know, press it, and what does that mean? Um, or, or I think it's either, I mean, really not enough. It's either you develop a program, you've you got the plan, either it's a good idea, and, and we press it, and it's money, or we don't think we can execute, so therefore we will, you know, bring it, bring it in a way that we need to come to Bob Gross. I agree, man. I think if there's an initial way to go, 75% of the program is going to be broken into the program. We're not going to be able to get a fee for it or the students in or funds, whatever we need to fund. I, in 75, I think it would be slightly lower. Some of these people that are involved, maybe we don't like how they wrote their application, but a lot of these are small organizations that don't have grant writers, don't have students. And I'm just going to say that they didn't understand the rules fully because there was some out there with some gray areas on how the town conveys to organizations uh, what they needed to do. And we're going to look at it more thoroughly than that, I think, based on what I'm hearing here tonight. So I think we need to give the benefit, the benefit of the doubt to the businesses. Um, we're not saying you're going to get the money, but I think we need to be a little more leeway to give the money. We're going to see the finances. We're going to see if this business really did what you said. I'm not sure. I haven't even wondered if you wanted to. Not saying. But there are some that probably did pretty well. There's some that are pretty nice in the application process. That is the deal of course. But the majority of them some are new. And I don't think that, I, I don't think we're in a position here is to say, well, we're going to be 32,000 or there should be 18,000 of your 25,000 for the thing. I think the town wants us to help these businesses because we're one of the few towns that is doing this type of program. A lot of towns kept them on and did their thing. But I think the town wants to help these businesses. And I think this is the opportunity to help us in the more company not the conference, so, but there's more businesses that are involved here. Yeah. And, and that's my thing. So I got to lower the number. What number I know, I would lower and I would only think of a hundred percent. If they have the number, give me the number. Jesse. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I'm sort of convinced that it's all or nothing. I think that it would be hard for all of us to then agree upon what would we get reduced. And so I, I think all or nothing, I don't know if 75 
is the threshold that I would use. I would rather we wait until we do a a, a first round of scoring before we determine what cutoffs are because we don't know how we're going to score these. Well, here's the risk of that. Um, you it, it leaves open the question that you adapted your criteria to the personality or the oh sure or the application. And if you just say seventy six, and you like, and, and someone likes a thing, they're just going to score it to a path of any. If you don't, like, you'll just score it below, and you'll go back to this thing, and you'll go, all right, well, I don't like this, so we need it to be a seventy five. So I'm going to take a point off to forty, and then we're done. What's or, the what's the hold on, Craig? Hold on, Craig. Hold on, Craig. What's the remedy? Hold, Jesse, Jesse, hold on one second. What's the remedy to that? The remedy to, to um, the problem you just identified. I well, I get like I said, I, I'm I'm suggesting that my remedy would be like if, like let's say I want to call for her ball. I don't like music, so I'll look at that first. I said that very quickly. The second thing I will say is. When we come up with instruments where we measure people's depression or anything else, we don't just simply say it's four into something and do whatever. We actually have to go through a series of tests on the scan with this thing's actually measured. And if it's kind of like, let's just say hypothetically that you know everybody comes in and scores everything at an 80 or everything at an 80. I, I mean, I would do not all that other stuff. I just I don't know if I feel comfortable with 75 because I don't know what everything's going to score. Like what if there's stuff that's a 60, 68 that averages out? Then in, uh, you know, in, on there, or what if what if what if something averages out to a 68 and we say no, but five of us have scored it all above, you know, I think we, we all five of us scored it at 80, and five of us scored it at you know 60. Well now it's a 70 and it doesn't pass. So five of us all thought it was worthy. That's fair, I guess. But we've chosen 75 and 76 as this arbitrary place for the end. That's my real problem. And you voted the way that it's like the application to the It it gets released when we well hold on. It's dumb. That's a picture of the dumb. You can't come back to it. It's the bottom of the Craig, Craig, hold on one second. We got the whole thing. We haven't, we haven't decided we haven't decided. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. We haven't decided what the threshold is to pass it on. And I'm suggesting that if we take a practice on that and see how it looks, then come up with the actual score that then says, okay, we can move on. It, it, maybe, I, maybe I didn't understand the concept. Did you say, I'm not sure, we'll interview him first and then. Interview? I mean, we'll, we'll, sorry, we'll, we'll look at the application first. Yeah, okay, so there's people here from, I think, so there's people here who are doing in person, we can't necessarily score, and then I'm just saying, I don't know if I could, I, I'm, I'm going to set up a the call because I don't know if we're making up whatever. I think we're using school. But we, what we need, what we need is a practical way forward, whether, how, no matter how, it, the least imperfect system, we got to find the least imperfect system Hold on one second, because because we got Mike Lydon and, and Chris, we got to get to. And it has to be implementable and it, it has to be transparent and easy to easy to explain. So other than averaging, no, I mean, we, we were invited, we were invited to score right? more than more than invited. We we're basically told to score in an effort to become more objective and less subjective, whether that's workable, like it's just the way it is. So this scoring seems to be the least, the, the, the least problematic. I can't think of a better way of doing it. And averaging is the only way we can do it. Okay, so you're an all or nothing guy. Um, and then we'll see how that works, and then we'll be able to. Yeah. No, it doesn't. No. 
um, Mike Lydon and then Chris Regan. Um, and what this circling, what this is circling around to is a, a vote on all or nothing, yes or no. And then if that passes, a vote on the the passing grade, a la the motion that Mike Glidden, he made that motion. So we would circle back to that motion. But the discussion is where do you stand on um, the Mike Glidden concept? It's it's uh, it's all or nothing. And then we'll get back to Mike's motion. You want me, you want me to endorse my own concept? No, no it, it was the Chris, because I feel like we're kind of ignoring him because he's <laughs> on good. Oh, no, not at all. I, um, <laughs> I, I am for all or nothing. I would be for lowering the threshold, not significantly, but from 75 to perhaps 70 or at the very much, very most 65, perhaps. All right. I think it's time to bring this to a vote on the all or nothing. If the all or nothing passes, um, then we got to deal with what the threshold is. So, the problem, the problem with with voting on, on on Mike Lydon's motion is it blends the specific numbers with uh, the concept. Mike, Mike, and I think we got to nail down. Mike, I'll, I'll, I'll with because we have talk about you know gray area and reducing and all that kind of thing. I think we got to nail that down, and and then Mike, with your permission, come to your motion, which is seventy five. Uh, Mike, can I can I? How's this? Um, you're you muted, I think. You got me now? Does everyone yeah. hear me? Do you Go have ahead. me? Do you Go have ahead. me now? Yep. It All was, right. Was... Why, why, don't, why don't I do this? I'll, I'll withdraw my motion, my motion, and I'd like to make a motion that with that it that the concept will be that there'll be a um, score set by the committee that we provide either a hundred percent or zero percent for the for these applicants. All right. I'll second that. So Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, the, as it, it, it may procedurally get a little complicated, but as we as we go through the applications and there's a decision made by the committee that a portion of that application doesn't pass muster, there'll be a vote on that reduction. And that reduction, if it's reduced pursuant to that vote, then that application as as reduced comes up against the scoring and you score that application. So it's only an application that can be bifurcated into two pieces? No. Or any application? Any application can be reduced if the, if the, but it's a shortcut, it's a shortcut version of saying no gray areas. Well, the gray area is up. The gray area is part of the application that either is excessive, not proportional, not caused by the pandemic. There could be meritorious requests in there combined with non-meritorious requests. The committee's job is to excise those that don't pass muster. If that's excised, then the, the balance of the request goes to the all or nothing. No, we're not, no, we're, great. We're going to take a vote and we'll jump off that bridge. Right? All or nothing means that you get to keep 75. Above 75, you get all. Below than 75, you get nothing. And all or nothing. We haven't addressed the threshold, yes, but that's correct. But is that all or nothing? I'm not going to. Here, here, let's go back to the beginning. We're going to review the application. If part of the application needs to be uh, excised or denied because of 
It's not caused by the pandemic. They want to buy a diamond ring for the executive secretary because the executive secretary was depressed. Hold the phone. Because the executive secretary was depressed because the pandemic and her efficiency went down and a diamond ring is the perfect solution. We may say no diamond ring and that application is reduced by 5,000. That 5,000, that application as reduced by 5,000 comes up against this concept of all or nothing. So the application minus the diamond ring, it, it, do the, then abstain. I mean, I, I, I can't make it any clearer, right? I, oh, let's, let's include that that's not going to no that's not how it has to work so, so that that lack of meeting the criteria would not be reflected in the score. So the states actually would know because we agree that the code is not the problem. I think they would yeah. agree. Yeah. So why would you then reduce? So well that's why I was that's why I was saying I don't want to make 75 because it doesn't really give you a lot of wiggle room to kind of determine like what people do on you know I, 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 to pick up my son. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to figure out what this all or nothing is because it, it appears that it's all or nothing. Is really then, 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 then jettison that terminology. Then use your own terminology. Don't get hung up on that choice of words. Just, just forget that. That's not what we're talking about then in you know, the way you see it. That's just our personal shortcut that many of us are using because we understand so you know the concept. Nothing, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the motion was made. Uh, the motion was made by Mike Glidden. Um, did you? Did you copy it down pretty? I got. I got it. Yes, I got the all or nothing based on what the committee agrees. I think the, the 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 concept the concept was that there's there's no gray area, and that the the um the grant request will be measured according to the to the criteria uh, mike lynn i'm going to back that off repeat it again if you could but the clerk got i it. do understand very yeah. clearly but i'm trying to communicate with you and it just ain't working so uh, yeah no it's it's you know uh, that that we rent a hundred percent means all or nothing. It's either you're getting a hundred or you're getting zero. So yep. that's and with a with a cutoff number. Okay. To be to be agreed on. However, the grant can be reduced if components of the grant don't meet the criteria, and that is not included in the all or nothing concept. A reduced grant then I'm goes not, to the all or nothing I'm not. concept. That's not what I, that, that's not my motion. Okay. My motion is 100% or zero. That's my motion. Okay. So hold the phone, hold the phone, hold the phone, hold the phone, hold the phone. Mike Glidden, what do you do in the diamond ring example that I gave? They got zero. Why? If, 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 hold on, they get zero if that the overall application falls below the number that we established, the score that we established. Okay, because 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 a good grant yeah, go writer, I can I can demonstrate that it meets it meets the criteria and it could score. And so say we have an organization that is providing fuels to launcher in Maryland, and it's a hundred thousand dollars worth, but fifty thousand going to Maryland, fifty thousand going to launcher. We look at that application and say, no, 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 we're not supplying everyone with 50,000 fuel. We agree to 50,000 for one of the fuel per fuel. So we're going to knock that 50,000 out of Maryland. We're reducing it to 50,000 because that's an absolute great thing to have for people who need it. Now we score it on that. 
not a hundred thousand. So whatever you're losing, we're reducing that. And I was working there. So you might might plan and everything, but take that out and then sort it. Is that pretty much what you have? Exactly. Because that's why it's far enough. Because then other one, you hear that everybody who's for that one is getting fifty thousand Americans, it should be one percent, but then I'm taking on everyone for saying it. So it's fifty thousand one, well, they get a longer time. So I don't think it'll be quite a few though. Do we have the ability and a situation like that to say that we will give an extra of dollars for a woman who's resident? Yes. Okay, so we are we have now curtailed their act. We have said uh you know, essentially, if you're going to use that money outside of town, um, we're not getting any benefits. So, you know, we, so that, 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 that's what I'm going to do. If you can put the name of Saw, you can put it in your plan. Saw it, but not the whole thing. So we can't, we don't want to score them here on that because there's so many people in the very same town, a lot of different people in law. I think it's just yeah. this poor, and, and if, if as a result of that, they get lower than 75. Okay, so here's what we're here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. We're we're calling a vote on on this on this motion. If you don't like it, vote no. If you do like it, when it comes time that the diamond ring is in the grant application, Craig, do what you want. But at the time we see the application and the diamond ring is there. We'll we'll take that up, and either we excise the diamond ring or we don't. Right. Hold the phone. Let me finish. And if we don't excise the diamond ring, you know that five thousand diamond ring is in there. Give it a low score, and maybe the whole application fails. That's your choice. But I think that's how we have to. I think that's how we have to do it, or else we're so. This is the all or nothing concept as indicated by Mike Lynn, but do you have the motion down? I just have all or nothing, and then you were gonna put uh, the other second piece in. No, I'm not gonna put the second piece. So we're gonna we're gonna stay with Mike Lynn's language. And do, should we have it read back? Should we? Yeah. We're going to vote in a minute. I want to make sure the motion is understood and clearly re reflected. I have scores. The scores should be set by the either all or nothing. And then I have you seconded. Um, Mike, we're not going to redebate this. We just want to get this clarified. Four, would you restate your motion slowly and loudly? And I'm going to turn my volume up a little bit so Bernadette can. Go ahead, Mike. Actually, Bernadette, Bernadette got it. What she said is she got it. So, so my, my motion so, is that that uh, we're going we're going to um, establish a number that they will we will we will grant a hundred percent funding for those who meet that number and those who do not or below it get zero. So all or it. nothing. Okay. Carl, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Hold on. All or nothing. Yes to all or nothing. Uh, Mike, yes to all or nothing. Craig, yeah. yes to all or nothing. Rob, yeah. yes. Mike Lydon, yes. Bob Gross. No. Jacqueline. Yes. Chris Regan. Yes. Jesse. Yes. Amy. Yes. So that motion passes, and now we got to set the uh, the limit. Um, and. Um, I, I think before I came to this meeting, I was thinking of this and, and I understand there's a ballpark. There's a ballpark of numbers, you know, is 74, 76. I mean, you know, come on. Um, so I am, I can certainly live with and will vote for the 
concept of below 76 is a no vote, is a rejection, is a no vote on the application. Yeah. Uh, failed, is that the? Yeah. Well, I'm, I am now, so I'm going to move that, or I'm going to move that all applications that, that receive a score of 75 or below get no award. 75 or below get no award. Second. I think, did you second, second that, Mike? I second it. Mike Lydon seconded that. You, you, tell me. Well, I, I don't know if it's too late. I don't know if it's too late. What were you going to put? Well, that's part of the discussion. So when we when we come around, tell me the number or the range. Maybe it's a range, and we live within a range. You, you know. We'll say seven. I know it's not. It's a little bit more. I would like to see fifty, but you know, I know that. I commend your sense of compromise. We're gonna we'll go around we'll go around counterclock. Uh, Craig, so the the motion is seventy five, but there's a notion of seventy. And I am sympathetic to seventy. The interesting thing, though, is a lot of times when you have been involved in groups like this, you score them all, and then you set the line. So here, essentially, it doesn't really matter practically between 70 and 75, because we're going to score them and ultimately at the end of your tabulation, what's going on in your mind is, is this an acceptable application in its totality um, between 70 and 75, right? So, because we're doing this before we're scoring, right? Maybe. Um, so, you know, I accept. You know, uh, I think we do a little bit to deal with the 70, and we're more comfortable with the 70. Um, so that's my preference at this point. I agree with that. 70 is my preference for us. Jacqueline, you like 70? Uh, uh, Chris Regan? 70. I support 70. Jesse? I think they took a little hat and we'll figure out what's happening and what the effect of the judge. But I like 70 because it's good. So, based on what you just said, though, based on what you said, now that they're not being, you might have to, based on what you said, 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 well, I agree with the 70, but I'm just saying that when you look at some of these applications, I look at a lot of them. There's going to be some that are just there's a big percentage of it that you can knock out. And you're going to give a low score. There's some really good attributes in that application for other items. And because we're going to give all or nothing, it's going to be. Just no, we've we've covered that. We've 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 covered that. What deserves to be knocked out will be knocked out depending upon what the committee votes. When the time comes, we'll see if the diamond ring stays in. And if the diamond ring, you know, stays in, it's 70 or 70, whatever. If the diamond ring goes away, it's still 70. Amy. So I will revise my motion retroactively to 70. All right. So I, I move that the, what did I say? 70 or below. Scores of, yes, scores of. 70, so I'm, I'll make it 69 or below. I'm not sure what the, so 69 or below would be rejected, would result in no award. All right. You want to vote yes on this before you go? Okay. So it's 69 or below, it's 70 or above. That's the motion. Okay, so Jesse was a yes. Carl was a yes, I think. Yes. Yeah. Mike Burdinsky was a yes. Craig Fishbein was a 
That's a yes. Bob Fritz. Rob. Yes. Yeah, it's a yes. Mike Glidden was a yes, I think. Mike Glidden. 69. No. That's a no for Mike Glidden. Bob Gross. Where'd he go? Jacqueline? Yes. Chris Regan? Yes. Okay. We'll record Amy tonight. Jeez, Amy. That's a yes. Okay. We're just about the end of the agenda. We're just about the end of the agenda. Um, you know, um, we will, I will try to um, target the, the agenda. I will try to craft the agenda so that they're not a lot of stuff on there so that I have to make a rough judgment that we get out in a couple of hours or two to three hours. Um, so maybe we'll get out earlier than we thought. Maybe we'll go That's blast through. Past, yeah, it's hard for the middle of something. You can't adjourn right in the middle of a discussion or something. So I think, well, but yeah. can you live, we'll, we'll target 9.30. I mean, we'll, we'll just target 9.30 and we'll see how fast we go. And we'll try to, and if we have to send some people home because we say, sorry, we're just running out of time, we'll do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't, Jack, I don't think, We'll have a problem. Well, uh, boys and girls. Yes. Yeah, I assumed you did. It didn't matter. Um, we got to get meeting dates for uh, the rest of February, March, and April. Um, and let's confirm next week. So, um, what I would like to do is save all three meetings. The agendas will be light, meaning not that many applications. We'll try to get out in a reasonable time. Um, you will get the agendas as we discussed. I'll present all three nights. That's what we discussed. Thereafter, we'll discuss alternating, you know, going around the, the table. So, um, Jeez, and I think we I think we decided is one night for business and two nights for nonprofits. I think that's what we I think that's what we decided. Yeah. So I'm gonna make um because the nonprofits are not all up, I'm gonna make Wednesday for nonprofits. That'll give more time to get up. And the um I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Wednesday will be uh, um businesses. And nonprofits on Tuesday and Monday. Um, looking into February, the week of February 13. Um, Mike. Chris. I, I have surgery on the 13th. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Um, Chris, what day do you have surgery? I have surgery on the 13th. Everything else is fine. One, three. Does that knock you out for the for week? That no, for that, just that day. Okay. And, and Mike, I, I have a PNZ meeting the 13th. 13th, I, is, 13th is knocked out. Um, Tuesday is a council meeting, but Craig, you're not going to be here anyway. You'll zoom in. So anyone objecting strenuously to the 14th of February, Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day? That's right, February 14th. I'm proposing a meeting for the 14th. So we'll knock that out. 15th, 16th. Okay, so we're gonna do this meeting on the 16th. In the as well, right? No. No. 
And Jackie, you can't do uh, Friday. All right, we're on the week of the 20th. Um, we really need to get in three dates. The 22nd, you can't make Monday the 20th, proposing Monday the 20th. That works. It's President's Day. It's a holiday. Yep. Hey, you can't. Yeah. Hubcap. I mean, I got to run this by Joe Mirror and Hubcap, but I'm. Here because we can fit fit the public in, and we can't. We may have difficulty up there. I was going to do it at six thirty, the regular, the regular time. Tuesday the twenty first, proposing that. Yeah. Jackie's looking at her calendar. So we got the 20th and the 21st, the 23rd of February. You're, you're not here? Okay. So that takes care of that week. The week of the 27th of February. Proposing. All right, I'm proposing the 27th of uh, February. I, I have a PNZ meeting the 27th. Proposing March 1st. All right, we're in for March 1st. Proposing March 2nd. We're good for March 2nd. Going to the week of... Going to the week of March 5, proposing, proposing March 6, Monday. That's good. You cannot? That's a no? Uh, proposing March 7. Okay, we're in for March 7. Um, two, two, two. I think I now I'm going to move to the week of March. Well, wait a minute. We got two meetings there in a row. <laughs> proposing the, uh, are the, Mar the week of March 12, proposing Monday. March 13. I cannot do the 13th. All right, that's out. March 14. Right. Uh, March 15. Okay. Proposing. That was Wednesday the 15th. Yeah, I'm going to review them all before we leave and run through them quickly and then um, uh, March, March 16. That's in. Let's get what? I have eight too. Yeah, I think But I'm up to March, the week of March 20, 21st. That's a council meeting. Twenty first is a council meeting, Craig. Yeah. It's not. No, it's the second floor. So we started the fourteenth. Oh, oh, that's fourteenth and twenty. Okay, so March twenty one. Everybody in? Okay, March twenty one. Let's get another one in. How about March twenty three?
22nd then. 22nd, back-to-back -back meetings are hard, but, but we'll do it. Because all the preparation has to be before. So let's stop there. Let me just review what we have. And we'll, we'll vote on, we'll, we'll not vote on, but we'll get. So we're gonna meet Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, February 30, sorry, January 30, February 1, February 2. Jeez, I am sorry. The 30, 31st, and the 1st. Next comes February 16th. The 16th. Next comes the 20th and the 21st. Next comes March 1 and 2. Next comes March 7. Well, you couldn't do that. Um, you couldn't do March 7, so... No, March 2nd. Oh, this one. So March 2nd is... March 7th is still on. But March 7, thank you. March 7 is on. March 1, 7, 15, 16, 16 21, 21, and 22. Uh, we're all done, I think. We'll approve minute next time. Um, the meeting is adjourned. Mike, you can adjourn the meeting.